This is the Dale Not Dale Podcast, Season 3. Are you tired of your favorite cut of beef or chicken cost more and weighing less every time you buy it? Uh-huh. I've got a sizzling solution for you. Good Ranchers Price Lock Guarantee. This is the only price lock on 100% American meat you can find, and you don't want to miss it. During their April Price Shield campaign, Good Ranchers is locking in your price until 2026. What? When you, when you subscribe to any one of their boxes of full 100% American meat and seafood that they ship right to your door. Good Ranchers is where I get 100% American meat I can trust that's tender and full of flavor every time. With meat prices continuing to go up and quality of store going down, Good Ranchers Price Shield will not only save you hundreds, but also help you put 100% American beef, chicken, pork, and wild-caught seafood on your plate that you can trust. Plus, get an extra 10% off your subscription. Use my code DNDPOD at GoodRanchers.com today. What I really love about Good Ranchers, other than all the people that live there and the product that they serve, is their commitment to transparency. Mm. They believe that you have the right to know exactly what's in your food. They're mm. amazing supporters of this show, so go support them and take the mystery out of all the meat you buy. This exclusive price shield offer ends with the, with the month in the month of April. So, if you want to secure your best price on meat until 2026, go to GoodRanchers.com and use my code DNDPOD. 10% off your subscription and a price lock guarantee until 2026. GoodRanchers.com, American meat delivery. On the podcast, we chillin' zest. Uncle Dale Vaughn Magnus. Yeah, we the best. Magnus in the cut. No shirt in sight. Spitting truth and jokes. Yeah, we keep it tight. Uncle Dale's wisdom. Dropping like gems with Vaughn's quick wit. Free publicity for Prime. Is that okay? That's good. Okay. What's up, y'all? We are live. What's up, Vonnie? Yo, yo. We got a special guest in today. We've been working on this for a while, and uh, we finally got him in town. Magnus, shut your <laughs> fucking <laughs> phone up. Everybody. Dude, we got, uh, we got, we got Amber, 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 Amber Alerts. Oh Amber shows up on the <laughs> podcast, completely <laughs> destroys the vibe. I feel like after I, I diss Texas, they're already looking for me. Dude, they, they are. are. They, they there's are. an Amber Alert out for Meatlicious right well, now. And we're going to have to talk about you dissing Texas. I'm trying so, to, I'm really scratching just, my head it's here. just the food. We have uh, Mr. Christopher Smith, Meatlicious, in studio, all the way from up north in uh, what? Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, yeah. Michigan. How's the water up Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Water is cold right now, so we got some ice up there, but we do have the Great Lakes. So. I'll talk about your Flint, Michigan. So. Oh, that one. <laughs> that one. <Yeah. laughs> what is good. Flint? It's good. We got a couple filters we run our water through at my house. So. Nothing wrong with a little lead pipe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we. So I guess we'll, we'll... Quick story. We met you through... We have a mutual sponsor, as in Good Ranchers. Uh, they sponsor yep. the podcast. You do a ton of media with them. Yep. If you haven't seen Meatlicious yet on uh, Instagram, I bet you have. If you follow anything with cooking, I guarantee you've came across one of your reels because uh, you got some great shit. Yeah, I have quite a few that have, have popped off. And if you follow Good Ranchers, you've definitely seen my content before. Yeah, for sure. I, every time I watch it, I just... I don't know to get mad or to get happy just because I'm like, golly, that looks really good. You made a chicken sandwich the other day, and I'm like, I wouldn't even eat that just because it looks beautiful. <laughs> well, I, you, I you don't, don't cook, so that's part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. Right? If you cooked, you could take the recipes and make them for yourself. So I could. I, it's not that I don't cook. It's just that I never... I you don't, don't cook. You can't cook. Is that what it is? I can cook. No, I definitely can cook. I just sometimes don't have the patience. I like okay. to grill. I mean, okay. I like to smoke meats. Okay, and, I've said that and way cook too it. Times. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. I, I mean, I, I like to cook. It, it's honestly the process of doing the dishes and stuff, yeah. stuff like that. It's just it gets me discombobulated, and I have a horrible time trying to multitask. Yeah, yeah. I love cooking, man. Dishes are the worst part. I so, agree with that. Oh. your recipes? Do you is those, are those your recipes? Yeah, so a lot of times uh, what I do typically is I'll find something that I really like out there that I've seen somebody make, and I'll put my own twist on it. So that's that's typically what I'm doing. Or, you know, I grew up in an Italian family, so we have a lot of recipes that have been passed down. So if you see me doing an Italian dish, a chicken parmesan sandwich, eggplant parmesan, meatball subs, typically I'm utilizing something that was passed down by my grandparents or my parents. But a lot of it is you just see, I mean, you have so many creators out there creating viral dishes and then you grab, you know, the, the main parts of what they're doing. 
you add your own flair to it. And typically that's kind of, kind of what I do. Or as I go through the grocery store, I just grab a ton or grab a ton of random crap and then bring it home and try to put something together with it. Oh yeah. That's yeah. What, that's so we actually we actually met about a year ago now. Mm-hmm. We met at the uh Indy five hundred. Yeah. With the uh, Good Rancher Good folks. Good Rancher screw. Yeah. And we had a we had a good night with the cocktail sauce. Yes, we did. That was uh <laughs> Harry and Izzy's, right? Yeah. So they got Harry Saint and Elmo's next next door. Yep. And yep. then Harry and Izzy's and then they have that special shrimp cocktail. Dude, I still got the videos so of it. Vaughn hyped it up for months prior. To us go, yeah. or a couple months prior to us going, and then uh, yeah, we actually so we got we got sat at the same table yeah. us two, you and your wife Morgan, yeah, we were all Adam just, and Adam, we were all and his dad, we were all sat at the same table, and then it turned into just like a bro fest of like who could eat the most yeah. cocktail sauce. I, I don't think I oversold how good. That, <laughs> no, you didn't. I I really think that that shrimp was amazing. The shrimp's amazing, but I mean, just the 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 heat that you get from that initial bite. You just start sweating. Your eyes start watering. I mean, yeah, you can't really, you can't really expect what's about to happen. Dude, you, you of anybody yeah. took it the best. Yeah, I did. He's yeah, a brute. Yeah. I well, mean, it was. It was a competition. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. I think I saw the video on my phone of you yeah. eating it. Honestly, it, we need I to hit put, your head on the wall. You need to put part of the video right here. Yeah. In, yeah. in the edit remember, so we remember, can see how intense it was. I remember you ate it and like you leaned back <laughs> and hit your head on the wall, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it'll <laughs> Chuck Norris just punch you right in the freaking throat. Yeah, yeah. No, and that, that, that was the night before the Indy, right? Yeah, yeah, that was Saturday night, and then, yeah, the, the race was on Sunday. But, I mean, that was a good time. I mean, the stick. so I went there for work, I want to say, a couple months prior. So I, I did have that sauce, so I knew what to expect. Morgan's first time going there, but obviously she's a vegetarian, so she doesn't get access to that type of food. But I knew what to expect. But I'm telling you, the first time I had that, I mean, it just it kind of blew me away. Dude, it's it's unexpected. So how is somebody named Meatlicious married to a, a vegetarian? Opposites yeah. attract. Jeez, yeah. talk about opposites attract. So when we first started dating, she loved meat, right? So like she would be eating yeah. cheeseburgers for breakfast. Oh. I mean, she still likes some kind of meat, but we would be eating. You know, she'd eat cheeseburgers for breakfast, double cheeseburgers bacon but then all of a sudden you know one day she's like i don't want to eat meat anymore she watched a video she watched a documentary on netflix yeah she watched a documentary (laughs) and when she puts her mind to something it's crazy it just happens for her so she instantly never had meat again she's never struggled with it she's never craved it and it was like that one day she made it you know she made up her mind and then she never had meat again and it's crazy because it's like I'm cooking every single day and I'm cooking a ton of meat and she doesn't get any of it. Right. And so like, it's just the kids and I, we get to eat all the meat, but she sits there and suffers. Dude. Yeah. Dude. She That's gets rough. basket all in. I mean, does yeah. she actually suffer though? Like, does she want to eat it? So it's, it's hard. So like, I would say it's 50, 50. A lot of times she does create, I mean, some of the stuff smells so good, right? When you fry up some bacon, or you make a nice steak, like she does when she smells that. She's like, man, I wish I could try that. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I think she suffers once in a while. So she just kind of tortures herself because she yeah. chose to be a vegetarian? Yeah, exactly. That's man. Like a pretty powerful documentary. She keeps trying to get me to watch it, and I'm like, I want no part Do you know of what it I'm is? I'm not even going to watch is it. it. Is no. it the one that came out there in 2020? No. So she's been a vegetarian for probably about eight years now. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what she watched, but she keeps trying to get me to watch those, and I'm like, I want no part of that because it's like I don't even want to watch it. Yeah, we'd have to change it to Impossible yeah, Meatlicious. Yeah, Veglicious. That's I don't know that's why it doesn't have a ring to it. No, that's why we order. That's why we order Good Ranchers, so it's uh, <laughs> we know where it's coming from. Exactly. You don't you don't want any of that fake meat. <laughs> no, I don't. Dude, you, you gonna do a fake meat uh, video for? Her? So I, I do, I think I need to do one vegetarian meal on my page. I don't think I have one single meal that a vegetarian could eat. So I was thinking about potentially doing like an eggplant Parmesan sandwich. Oh, I'd eat that. But, but then I was going to throw bacon on it. And I'm like, is it, is, it yeah. even, is it even vegetarian if I take that and I put bacon on it? But like, that's what I do, right? Like I got the Good Ranchers bacon. I'll make yeah. a nice bacon weave, toss it on top of the sandwich. So Oof. yeah. I don't know if I'll ever have a vegan or vegetarian meal on my page. Yeah, you'd have to change your name for that yeah. post. Yeah. Cheatlicious. Exactly. <laughs> Cheatlicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Uh, man, eight years. That's a long time. How She likes the way, I mean, she feels good and she. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would say like she, you know, she felt fine before. She's always been a healthy, fit person. So, you know, a lot of people sometimes say they go vegetarian or vegan and all of a sudden they feel better. 
it's like that for everybody. They go on a carnivore diet and they're like, oh, I feel better doing it. But I, I would say she feels the same. Like, I don't think any health benefits from it. Yeah. You know, it's just a personal Life, it's decision. It's a lifestyle, yeah. yeah. Man, that's that's got to be tough. That's just something I wouldn't do. Yeah. No, never. never I mean. Never, never, never. I, I would shrivel away. Like I'd alcohol, I can pounds. do that. Yeah. But meat, I mean, that's there's just some things that that's just crossing the line. Two things. Meat. And energy drinks for me, or yeah. just any sort of caffeine. Those would be those would be very tough for me to give up. Dude, Mag- Coffee would be bad. For Magnus me. is a uh, energy drink fiend, dude. Yeah, he'll show up at my house at ten o'clock at night. He'll be propping one open. I'm like Jesus. And he stays up till seven o'clock in the morning. Playing, He's a gamer though. Playing kids games. Me and you. Fortnite's so, not a so kids game. Fun fact: I was a professional gamer for a little bit. No way. Uh, yeah. No. Absolutely. Here. What game? Yeah. Clash of Clans. It's a it's a mobile device game. I was ranked like the number six player in the world. I had about twenty counts. I was running and almost won a trip out to Estonia for for the championship. So, um, you know, I ended up. I have a very addictive personality. So when I decide to do something, <laughs> I go all in. Right. So like. <laughs> Even for gaming, like I've always been a big gamer, but I get so entrenched in it. Like I can't just pick up a game and play it. It's going to be my life, right? I'll be up till 4 a.m. every yeah. day playing the game. And so I got into Clash of Clans and it's just crazy competitive. But at first it was a hobby and then it just got so popular. They started doing esports around it, right? And then I had like 15 accounts I was managing. I was getting paid by an organization to play. And then we almost made it to a tournament where they sent you to Estonia and you could win a hundred grand. And so like, Right when we lost, we lost by like a percent. It's a weird way that they calculate things. So we didn't end up going. And it was like at that moment, I went on vacation and I put the game down. And like mentally, I had to be like, I'm never going to pick up this game again. And I'm never going to open up the app. Now, meanwhile, I have like $7,000 in accounts that I could go sell. And I just never opened the app again. I let all my accounts kind of die away. And then I've never played the game since. And that was the only way that I knew I could put down the game because it's just like I get so addicted. To so you can thing. sell your accounts? Yeah. So, I mean, they take forever to build up. So it's like a level-based game where when you start an account, you'll be level one and then you can get to level 12. But it's such a long process to do so because think of it like a Warcraft game. You're building all these defenses, characters, yeah. different things like that. And they take sometimes 20, 30 days to go up a level, right? So, like, it could take a lot of time to do it or if you were to pay – to like gem, they call it gem. You can gem through all the wait times. It could be anywhere from like twenty to thirty thousand dollars in account to like pay your way to the top. So oh my goodness! There's a lot of a <laughs> lot of money, a lot of money in that game. Uh, a lot of a lot of time tied up. It was it was a crazy time. Like we'd be driving on the expressway going out to dinner, and I'd have to pull over and pull out my iPad and mobile hotspot and do an attack really quick, and then pull back on the expressway. <laughs> oh, Morgan hated it. Like that's that, an addiction. Oh yeah, yeah. Morgan hated it, but it's like. You That's why she went you, vegan. Yeah, well, you can't. <laughs> Listen, you can't help when the wars are for that game. So you would have like a war, and it starts at a specific time, ends at a specific time, and you can't help it, right? Like you, yeah, you got You can't turn your back on your team. Yeah. So you know that that was a small. I think, I think the war was in your mind. Uh, it was, it was. So, so now we move from the the game addiction to the the content creator addiction. Hey, so. that's that's okay. So what year did when did you start your page? Yeah, so I would say probably the end of the end of COVID. So I, you know, started posting pictures. You know, I started a new page and I was like, you know, because I got locked out of my other one. So I started posting pictures on my story. It was just going to be a regular account. And I started posting food pictures and everyone's like, oh, you know, what's the recipe for that? It looks amazing. So then I was like, okay, well, let me like start recording some of this, detailing the recipe, posting it. Meanwhile, I'm doing this all on my iPhone. So the quality is, you know, very low at this point. I have no experience in media or doing any of that type of stuff. And then I started to realize you can make pretty decent money from companies and companies started reaching out to me to send me free product. And when I started getting free product, I'm like, hmm, like let me start to make better videos, right? Because you see all these other creators that you look up to and their videos and you're like, oh, I wanna make content similar to that. So I left my last job about a year and a half ago and I had a week off. And so I bought a brand new camera. So I upgraded to a DSLR, or a DSLR camera. And then I sat down on YouTube for about seven days and learned how to film, learned how to do the lighting. And I started recording better videos and then companies started paying me. So I kind of just, wow. you know, it just took off from there. Yeah, and I will then I say turned you're... it only into a food page. So I kind of removed all my other personal content and just made it. The meatlicious food the, page. The quality of your videos are phenomenal, and yeah, yeah that, I mean, that's that's what such stuff apart because yeah, people can cook, but you got to have good content that people are going to want to watch and stay, I guess, engaged yeah. in. They want to see the juices running through the you oh, know yeah. the chicken or whatever. Yeah. yeah, 
people, I mean, people don't understand. Like every time I tell somebody how much work it takes to make a video, people are just floored they and blown away. Yeah. They have no clue. So like an average video to record, if even it's just a chicken parm sandwich, will probably take me about five to six hours to record the video. And that will have anywhere from 50 to 60 individual mm -hmm. videos that I merge all into a 30 to 40 second reel. And then the editing process God. on that video could take me anywhere from six to 10 hours, depending on the edit, right? And then if you're doing a full voiceover, you have to kind of do that a few times, make sure it sounds good. So you're spending, I mean, and, and a lot of other content creators who make similar quality content that I do, same thing for them. You're spending 15, 16 hours a video. Yeah. And you're doing th three videos a week. Yeah, two to, I kind of pushed it or kind of pulled back to two uh, just because I, I lost some brand deals. Um, but yeah, two to three typically and yeah, a week. So I'm up all night editing or either shooting a video. Yeah, on top of a full time, a full -time on job? On top of a full time job. Two kids. So when did you start yeah. doing with the, so let's start by the name Meatlicious. Mm. How long to, from when you started the page did you turn it to? Meatlicious. Yeah, like. that was a funny story because when I first started the page, my name was like user seven two four zero two three six. It was it was. Oh, I remember crazy. that. Yeah, it, <laughs> and it was it was like that for a while, and I think it was right around when I got to ten thousand followers and brands started reaching out to me like, hey, let's do a collab post, but you have to change your name, right? Like you have to change it. Like we can't work with you if this is your name. Yeah. So I, uh, I I did a text message to all my buddies. I'm like, listen, I need a name change. Like let's all just throw out some random names. I mean, there were some good ones, but think about it. It's like Instagram now at this point has been around for <laughs> how many years? Since There's I've no good names available. So like they're throwing out Grills Gone Wild. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's an awesome name, but that's definitely not available. <laughs> And then um, somebody threw out Meatlicious. I think it was uh, my buddy uh, Daniel. So he threw out Meatlicious. So I looked it up and it was available, which is weird because it's not available on any other platform. And it's a restaurant in a different country. So it has like a page. So they must have had it previously owned on Instagram. And they probably deleted it and it was available. So there was Meatlicious available and then Meatalicious available. So I chose the first one. Kind of been using it ever since. There you go. Yeah, it's yours I, now. I can't get it on YouTube or TikTok, so I put a little underscore at the end. Really? Yeah. I had a buddy of my used to work with. He called me Delicious for a long time. Mm, how'd you get that nickname? I don't know. Those biceps. Yeah, dude. Talk yeah. about biceps, dude. Or, or those quads, dude. Look at yours, <laughs> dude. Every, bit, every one bit. of your videos, you got to have a little thirst trap in there. Do you still doing some? Uh, you still doing uh, arm wrestling? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm still training for it. So about a month ago, um, I got a pinch nerve in my neck. So my right arm is like totally useless right now. So I was at the gym. Oh, that's arm wrestle. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I could lose to 80 pound kid right now. So like I'm at the gym and I'm curling dumbbell curling or curling dumbbells and I'm curling 65, 70 pounds with my left arm. No problem. I can't even curl 30 pounds with my right arm. So like the nerve is like compressed, but I feel the pain all the way down my oh. arm. So for a month now, I have like 30% strength in my right arm. It's so, so weird. So like I'll go to pick up a cast iron pan and my wrist will just completely give out. Yeah, you right need to go to the yeah. chiropractor. That's what I was thinking. So tomorrow when I'm at Good Ranchers, they said they have a decent one down the street. So I'm just going to go try to walk in and see yeah. an adjustment. Most of them are pretty good about getting you in. Yeah. If not, I got a guy in town too that's good to get in. Yeah. yeah. Magnus will do it. Yeah. Will, will you walk? Will you walk on my back? No, I have. I know okay. a couple of chiropractors. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. He, yeah. He's more of a uh, Swedish massage guy to, to dudes. I don't. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. adjust. So I, I just got back from San Diego prior to going to Dallas, uh, and I, I got two massages there because I was trying to kind of work work through things. I go in there and they're like, "Do you care if we walk on your back?" And I'm like, "Sure, like if that's what you're into, like yeah. go ahead and go walk <laughs> on my back." So, so I go in and I mean this, I thought it was out of 50 shades of gray. I walk in and they have like straps on the ceiling, yeah. bars on the ceiling. It must've been Ty. Yeah. And like, she's like pulling herself up, stomping on my back. I got bruises on my back. And then they did like the cupping and the scraping. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I've never had any of that before. It's really good, but I do think I need a chiropractor. No, yeah. Like, chiropractor will definitely help just, that. Were they based out of a gas station? No, no. Truck stop. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A little, little higher quality. That's the best $25 yeah. massage. Lot lizards, boy. Yeah, absolutely. Doing lot, <laughs> doing like, lot lizards. It's, like, it's full service. Dude. Yeah, oh, you, you, don't get, absolutely. you don't get the basic service at the truck stop. No. It's full service. Dude, I love full service. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll come in here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a place down in Kima. I used to go to her once a while that, that uh, 
Thai Kima massage. They do that. They do that athletic massage yeah. with the walk on your back. Man, I tell you what, though, they can put you to tears, though. Oh, yeah. Have you ever had the scraping before? Yeah, the chiropractor, he does that, too. Dude, that, that, That's, nothing I like that. that. Nothing I love it. Nothing, nothing about that feels good. Oh, it feels great. So you can it's a mindset, right? Like when I go into oh, a massage, weak. I always tell them as hard as you can possibly go. And and the massage is never comfortable. I'm like holding my breath and I'm like yeah. trying not to cry. So you like the deep tissue yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That's the only way you're going to ever work any knots. So oh, yeah. I like to relax. Yeah. Yeah. He likes to just scratch his back. Yeah. <laughs> tickle my <laughs> head. Just tickle, just tickle my hair. You get the tickle massage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My four-year-old likes that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm 39, but I I like four. Rub my back. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So meatlicious. Uh, yeah, that's cool. So what? What? When was that? That did you put that name out? So yeah, it was probably probably about a a year ago now um, that I that I made the switch. And at first, every one of my friends made fun of me, but now I think I mean I think it's a really good name for the type of content. No, it's like, great. I'm only cooking, I'm only cooking meat, so it's pretty it's pretty catchy. But at first, I'm like. Do I really want to use this name, but it's grown on me. I love it now, so it works. You, you doing? Can't, any, you can't really change now. No, you doing any no, merch or anything yet? No, no merch yet. No merch yet. But there, there may be a seasoning coming out soon, so we'll have to stay tuned on that one. But no merch yet. Um, it is something on my mind. Um, just need need a little bit more time to think it through. Yeah. Well, if you need any advice on merch, let us know. We'll tell you somebody that knows how to do that. Okay. <laughs> We do have a guy. You have a guy. Yeah, you have a guy for everything, don't you? Right. We got a guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we can't sell merch, but we definitely get it set up. Buddy. Yeah, it's, it's tough, dude. Golly. It's like, well, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, it, it, that's 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 the tough part. It's like, can you like can you get a random person to want to wear like your brand? Yeah. On yeah. Them, so, right? so you know, we have some merch for the podcast, and uh, we got luckily we got blessed by I got a buddy of mine, him and his, his twin brother. They have a company called Lamont Branding. So when we started the podcast, he's like, hey, man, I'm going to hook you up. They gave us 200 free shirts. He's like, I'm going to donate them to you guys just to help you guys out and get started. I mean, so yeah. that was like a huge win to mm-hmm. where like he goes, hey, I'm going to give to you all. Y'all can sell them, make you some money to get kind of things going. Yeah. But uh, even that was tough to do, did man. Sell to all, did you sell all 200? No, we sold a good little bulk at the beginning. Okay. I, now I just give them out to people. Uh you know, we just want to get them out there. Is that what that is? That's one of them. Okay, yeah. all right. But we just we want to get them out there. But you know, we start talking about. We were like, man, we're, we're just like, man, it's hard to sell merch. But I was like, I thought of thinking about. I was, okay, I love Joe Rogan, but I'm not gonna wear a Joe Rogan Experience shirt. I haven't. So I've never like, seen. I've never seen somebody walking in an airport with a Joe Rogan Experience shirt. Never. Yeah, so that's what makes it. I was like, you know, fans of the show that really like us and they want to support us, they bought shirts. Exactly. And then if there's somebody like that comments on our stuff all the sure. time, I will message them like, "Hey, show me your address, and I send them a free shirt." Yeah. So but, you heard that here. Comment on this guy's dude. Page, give me right? comments. We're gonna give, give you him free comments. Shirt. Yeah. You'll get a free shirt. <laughs> he may even get a tattoo with your username on it. Yeah, do, it. <laughs> do anything. I, I told Good Ranchers I get a tattoo, but they they didn't come so, to, so I to think, the table. I think we both we might have to do that. So when we were in Indy last year, I was about this far away from getting a nice ribeye somewhere on my body. Yeah. But yeah, that a lot of people yeah. went and got tattoos. Yeah, a lot. And well, they yep, got the indie I, tattoos. I was with the with the group we were looking for okay. the next day we were looking for or actually the day before, the night before we were looking for a tattoo shop to go in and get tattoos. They were all closed. And so the next morning I was leaving, they all went and got their tattoos. And so I didn't get one, but I was going to get a ribeye. We just have to work on the payment, right? Because I feel like a good rancher's ribeye in every video for the rest of my life. That has some value. It's got to be, yeah. Yeah. I was going to get one. I think get a ribeye with like the Good Ranchers brand in it or mm-hmm. something like that. I'd be down yeah. for that. Where, yeah. would you, where would you get it? Wherever they want me to. Okay. For it. What about you? My neck. I, I would watch. I, I, know that, I know that's a temple, but I mean, how much money would it take to, to get a tattoo? Well, um, I, I, I really won't sell my dignity, but probably a thousand bucks. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of placement does that get you? Dude, Cause, I don't... Because I could man, probably give you a thousand hey, bucks. I don't know. I get a meatlicious tattoo, like a follow me meatlicious tattoo on you. I, I, I don't give you a thousand bucks for that. I would yeah. dedicate this whole leg <laughs> to any sponsors that want to pay for it. I'll do it. I'd be like a NASCAR. I, I, I will say that the group that went and got those tattoos, um, one of them had a bunch of like blood and pus in their, in their <sighs> stuff. Um, and then I saw them... Christmas time. Yeah. And actually, no, we went to we went to a, a pizza party for mm, yeah, Good Ranchers. Yeah, so about the girl who lost her arm from the tent. <laughs> yeah, her, yeah, her, yeah. Her, yeah. <laughs> and um 
it was uh, it was Nick Joseph actually yeah. who he, and I saw it and I was like, hey, let me see that tattoo. That thing <laughs> looks like it's 416 years old. Oh, it's like yeah. all faded. <laughs> well, and, when you when you go yeah. walk in anywhere, you're not gonna get the best tattoos because those mm, guys are, no. are are open for a reason. I got one tattoo and the amount of research I did for such a simple simple tattoo. I got some Roman numerals up here on my shoulder. It was crazy. I could, I, I mean, it was tough. Uh, there might have been some drinks involved, but. I was ready to go in a random shop and, and get that ribeye. Dude. Hey, the, the funniest thing was that morning, it's 5.30 in the morning yeah. when we show up to the, the race, Indy, yeah. and uh, they're talking about their tattoos. So Vaughn walks up talking to somebody else, and like Aaron's got his back to him. He's like, man, you know, the crazy thing about Indianapolis is like their laws about... Yeah, it's the, only, it's the only, it's the only uh, city in the country that does not require uh, their needles to be pre-sterilized. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Dude, <laughs> and that turned around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she turns around and like, you know, obviously when I'm joking around, nobody can tell no, if I'm being no, serious or like, not. And I was like, so yeah. Funny. And then I looked at her like, oh, you got a tattoo? I should probably, you'll be fine, I think. <laughs> Do her face. And then she is like, and she doesn't, you know, she doesn't know me well enough and she's yeah. kind of walking around like, is that, yeah, that was the first time we met her. Is that, and, is that true? And then she sees Nick in the corner of her eyes yeah. shooting the pus out of yeah. his eyes. Oh, man. Dude, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. So when did you get hooked up with uh, Good Ranchers? Yeah, so I remember it was it was early on. It was it was probably my first my first deal. Um, and it was it was just as simple as as me reaching out to them. So a lot of creators don't realize when you're smaller at that point, like you're the one who has to reach out yeah, to brands, right? No like, doubt. That's, that's, that's the thing. If you just sit there waiting for a brand to reach out to you as you try to grow, it it's happen. never going to happen. So like, that was one thing that I had to learn. So I reached out to them and I was like, Hey, love your guys' product. Love what you stand for. Cause our beliefs are, you know, aligned and everything. And I was like, if you guys, you know, want to send me a free box of me, I would love to do a video for you. And mind you, at this point I was shooting on my iPhone. My quality was lower, probably like 7,000 followers. So they sent me sent me out a box. I you know put it, all my effort into like you know that whole box, right? You get a ton of meat in every good ranchers box. Yeah. So I I did like eight videos for them, and you know really you know pushed pushed my hardest on those videos, and they turned out good. And they ever since then you know kept sending me sending me meat. So like that's my longest probably deal that I have. But yeah, I was small. So like if you're a small creator, don't be afraid to reach out to these brands that you want to work with. For sure, dude. And, I send I send message everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Like anybody that you want to work with, if I need a new grill, before I go buy that grill, I'm going to reach out to, to Traeger, Pits and Spits, Weber. I'm going to reach out to them and see, like, hey, like, Rectech I'll has some cool ones. You've seen you. those? Rectech? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like cool. their stuff. I think my favorite, like, I love Weber's. I have a couple videos coming out uh, for Weber. They're releasing a new uh, flat top grill. Um, I love Weber's products. Pits and Spits, they're based here. They're based out in of Houston. Houston. Yeah, they make, they make the custom stuff. Yes. So, I, I mean, that was my first smoker. I mm -hmm. mean, I had another one that was really small, didn't work well. And Good Ranchers hooked me up with them, and they reached out to me, and they sent me one of their custom smokers, which this what? thing this thing is huge. Yeah. This thing came on a semi-truck, <laughs> parked in the middle of my road. There was a line of cars because I live on, so I live on the lake, but there's a street between the lake and my house, so it's in my front yard. And he was blocking the whole road. And so he, inside the truck, popped out like a little forklift. He picked up the the grill, drove it all the way to the back of my driveway. I have a long driveway. Dropped it in my garage, left it there. So I grabbed some meat out of the freezer. Good Ranchers meat. I was like, here you go, dude. I know that was a lot of work. So I gave him a bag of meat. But when I unboxed that thing, he left it in the middle of my driveway. And I still had to get it in my garage. It's like 700 pounds of American, yeah. American steel. Yeah. And it's like, I can't even move this. Thankfully, it came with wheels. So I had to tilt it on its side. I got a bunch of buddies. We put it on. But that thing, I mean, the quality on that thing is insane. Well, it yeah. lasts forever, too. It oh, will. Yeah. yeah, that's a good brand. Uh, there's another one called the uh, Texas Pit Maker. They okay. make the vault. Mm. It's phenomenal. It's mm. an awesome, awesome pit. Yeah, we, we have a... Uh we have like a pull behind cook and rig for our, my company. We okay. do like events. Oh, that's cool. So, and it pits and spits made that one. Like it's mm. a custom, like it's got, it's got a big flat top on the front. It's got the big smokers. It's got sinks. Yeah. It's got all kind of cool stuff, man. Are Spot they, for TVs. Are they hang. by here? Pits and spits? I yeah. Don't, I don't they're, know. they're, uh, they're not too far. I mean, I'd okay. say 30, 30 minutes. Yeah. I didn't realize how big Houston was until I it's big. started coming over here. Yeah. I you're on the, Everything was next to each other, but no. So You're on the big. small side of Houston, okay. too. I got to talk about your story post last night. So last night, I think it was yesterday, he, uh, he talked uh, some shit about Texas. He said Texas got horrible food. 
Was that said? I mean, was that? Posted? Yeah, you yeah, said popular know. opinion. Texas, Texas has the worst food of any state. I've oh, ever dude. Been to. I don't know at Look, this point. Magnus, that's fighting words, Magnus. Uh, yeah, I, I'm getting some eyes <laughs> behind the camera right now, and he's pointing at his stomach as if <laughs> that's good that's, here. Yeah. I, <laughs> listen. All right. So what ended up happening was I flew down to Texas for a work conference, and it was three days. And the meals that we were getting by the conference were terrible. Well, so you like, can't judge that. Yeah, but it's, but we were going to restaurants in, in Texas, right? Like me- Mexican restaurants, barbecue restaurants. I don't even remember the names of them because they were that bad. Yeah. And then on the last day, so I made that story post. Big mistake because I got about 1,000 people in my DMs. You got ripped? They're pissed. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> pissed. Dude, I'm on following you. You're an idiot. <laughs> if I ever see you in Texas, I'm going to kill you. Oh, that, I wrote oh, that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I, it's like people are so dramatic. Like one time I used ranch in a video instead of blue cheese and the people in Buffalo were messaging that they were going to come to my house and kill my whole family. Go. Because I used, yeah, because I used blue cheese or I, mean, I, I used ranch it. instead of blue cheese on yeah. a wing, right? So like. Blue cheese is terrible. Yeah. I would rather use ranch anyway. Of course. And this, that's it. the thing is like yeah. Buffalo can't do shit yeah. about it. We yeah. can say whatever we want. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but they don't know how to cook in Buffalo. No, like, they that's, really that's don't. The big, they think they invented Buffalo wings, mm, but yeah. we made them better and, and, and ranch is superior. But back to the. And it's not even a buffalo. It's a chicken. Yeah, exactly. It's very misleading. Idiots. Wait, it's not buffalo? <laughs> no, it's not. Mean? It's a chicken. <laughs> Man, all right. Yeah, so back, I mean, back to the Texas thing. So I put out that story. I got a ton of hate. Everybody unfollowed me. I'm very sorry for that post. But <laughs> that night we went out to Nick and Sam's in Dallas, which was amazing. We got a $600 steak for myself. It was a very, very, very good steak. Six hundred dollars steak. Yeah, it was a wa- it was a wagyu steak. I've eaten at Holy Nick and Sam's. Smokes. Yeah, it was it was it was very it was a very good. We had a high roller with us. Chris Heckler's his name, and he's like, I want to get this guy whatever he wants, and so he's he, delicious. Yeah, yeah, so he wanted to he wanted to fix the the issue with Texas food. So I got that. It was very very good. But you know that being said, I still want to try Texas barbecue. So. I hear Houston has better barbecue than Dallas. I don't wait, know if that's wait. true. It's not even close. Yes, so, not close. I mean, is there any recommendations if, if for me to go to tomorrow? For for barbecue? barbecue. I just want like man, good got brisket. Barbecue. Brisket. Killings. Sausage. Oh. Killings is my favorite brisket. Killings is good. I, there's so, that's the one I'm hearing There's right literally now. so many. You're on Pinkerton's the, in the Heights. Pinkerton's I heard that one. Too. Truth. Those are Truth barbecue. Truth barbecue. The, pit, the Pit Stop. Is that what it's called? Yeah, there's also uh, Lava Care. Not the Pit Stop. The uh, Rest Stop. Pit House. God dang it. What's the name of that one? It was in the, they have a, man, I, Killings is the best brisket yeah. I've ever had anywhere. Well, did you see the brisket I posted the other day? I did, but I didn't try it. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was my first brisket I ever cooked. Fun fact, that was the first brisket I've ever tried outside of like a shitty restaurant. Yeah. You know, like a shitty Leo's Coney Island that has a brisket sandwich, which obviously isn't brisket. Um, so yeah, I was super impressed with that. So I would love to compare that to... Yeah. Brisket. yeah so being in dallas like so you know obviously texas is a large country yeah <laughs> country by is is what it is um if you take the food scene i would and i'm and i'm trying not to be biased here but houston's gonna be number one then you got austin number two san antonio three dallas number four okay i mean it's not dallas is not uh you, you, Dallas people are proud. They're gonna say, "Oh, it's the, you know, it's a great food scene." It's not. It's shitty. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do we we agree with that, Magnus? Yeah, that's yeah. that ranking is accurate. Okay. He yeah. travels. He travels a lot. Yeah. And so, if you if you look at like the yearly rankings of food scenes, there's always three that come to number one. It's Philly, it's Houston, and it's L.A. And they're constantly back and mm. forth on which one's number one. Huh. So what's well, now? What about Kansas City barbecue versus? So I haven't had Kansas City barbecue, but there are some people who claim that it is better than Texas barbecue. Yeah, they're from Kansas City. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess it's all about everybody's flavor. Uh, Kansas City's a sweet, yeah, it's like a sweet heat. Okay. A um, lot of sauce. Um, y- you're not going to get a better brisket than. You could in Texas. I mean, right. you really can't. They invented it, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, brisket makes their stuff where you don't have to eat sauce with it. I mean, yeah. They got, they make a good yeah. bark. I mean, it's, That's oh, good. man. Killings is, I'm telling you right now. Uh, we'll give you we'll incredible. give you some spots to go. The, yeah. the problem is all the good spots. I mean, Houston's gigantic, right? Yeah. So 
I I know of a place that you would absolutely love, um, and it's an hour and twenty minutes from here, but it's still Houston. Yeah, that's um, crazy. Which one is that? It's um, God, I knew you would ask. You uh, not Utopia. Uh, help me out here, Magnus. It's out in Spring. Oh, Spring Creek? No, definitely not <laughs> Spring Creek. <laughs> That's I'm blanking on it. I don't know what uh, your, your Utopia barbecue or I, I I'll, 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 right. I'll get it in my head. Um, but yeah, so down here, I mean, it depends on where you're going. Are Cats you, is good too. Cats barbecue over there in uh, Santa Fe. That's really good. I'm, what's what's the closest one that you would say is top tier? Killins. Killins. What is that? Like ten minutes, fifteen minutes? Nah. Are you 20, going to Good 20, Rancher tomorrow? Yeah. In Pearland, it's like 45 It's going to be... Not that far from there. It's going to be about 20 minutes from yeah, Good Ranchers. Yeah, if you're going to be Good Ranchers, it's, mm. not, it's not too far from there. It's, it's, it's good. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, actually, they... If I'm not mistaken, I think last time we were there, didn't they bring in Killens for lunch for us? That's what I heard yeah. they were going to do. They are? That's what Adam said. Okay, good. So but, Killens so I'll is... Be, I'll be there tomorrow, but then we're going to Jermaine's house for a wing challenge. And just a little glimpse into the future, I won that wing challenge. Okay, good. There's no way Jermaine, Jermaine's making a better wing. Jermaine, can I? Oh, if he, he beats have you, you, seen him cook? Y'all got to make a bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Maybe, maybe a tattoo, dude. I dude, you're so. you're hankering for a tattoo. Yeah, I'm telling you, by the next indie race, I'll have a tattoo. What you know? What would be really shitty? Like if we all got Good Ranchers tattoos, and then they were like, guys. Yeah. I'll see y'all later. I uh, appreciate. <laughs> Appreciate all y'all have done for us. Oh, they got to pay me for the tattoo, though. Yeah, I feel like it's like a license. Like, I feel like you just get like reoccurring revenue. Like, yeah, it's an annual payment. Or do we charge tattoo. them for removal? Mm. I'm not that's gonna remove expensive. a tattoo. I'll yeah. just keep it. I heard that's painful. Oh. What's that baseball player? Is it Bobby Bono? Something Bob like that. Bobby yeah, Bonilla. He gets like what? How much money every single? Is it every year? Or yeah. Like every. I think that's like just ending. Or it's about life. to end. I need a deal like that. <laughs> Oh yeah, he had like a thirty-year deal or something. That backloaded like deal. That. Yeah. yeah, genius. Yeah, good for him. It's a good idea. Yes. Mine's all front-loaded. I'm gonna get paid one <laughs> <Yeah>. day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. It's funny when I got this. Chris, like, I can't believe you got Vaughn's face on your leg. I'm like, dude, I don't care. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, no, it's a nice tattoo. It came out good, right next to his nuts. It. Who did it? <laughs> uh, I did. Casey Ball won it. Uh, Bold and brave tattoo. He does really good. Man, he's quick too. This is like an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, he did a good job. It took an hour and twenty minutes for six Roman numerals. Dude, he's quick. Wow. And he works well. His lines really good, yeah. but he's just he's been doing it like fifteen years, something like okay. that. But this guy's I, I did some research too. Same way I was like, okay, I like his stuff. His Instagram looks really yeah. good. He makes good good looking tattoos. I was like, that's the guy. Yeah. What do your Roman numerals stand for? So it's uh, our first son's birthday. So Mavericks. So 8 30 2019. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, so I got I got our anniversary date yeah, on here. Yeah, simple. Yeah. So I'm constantly reminded I do have another kid now and he's two and You do those? Yeah. Side. That's what everyone keeps telling. Me. I don't I don't like that balance. I think I want to go like right wrist somewhere. Yeah, yeah I think that. Would I would be. wait for him to grow up to where you see which one see, you like the most. Yeah, well, that's yeah. I shouldn't <laughs> say that because <laughs> everything on video lives forever. So yeah. I like them both equal. There you go. Yeah, that's what, that's what <laughs> every, how old are you kids? So <laughs> four and two. Okay. Yeah. Everybody has a favorite kid. Yeah. That's Vaughn right. can that's say that because he's only got one kid. I got at least favorite. Yeah. And a favorite. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have a favorite? <laughs> He won't admit it. That's the thing. I mean, I, you know, hey, I love Bronson, but me and Kenzie, dude, I don't know. No. <laughs> yeah, Kenzie, my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> dude, your daughter's a beast on that volleyball court. Dude, man, I yeah. tell you what, it's it's a uh, that was crazy. Volleyball's fun, man. Yeah. She's she's a grinder too. Like she she works. Like she plays golf too. Yeah, like tomorrow man. we got our we got our district golf tournament tomorrow. That's sweet. What did so, she shoot? Uh, well, they only play like four or five. It's it's, it's middle school, eighth grade. Okay. So they play like four or five holes. Tomorrow is a nine hole. Mm. So I'm like, hey, if you can shoot, she shot a 57 last time we played nine. Mm. I said, hey, if you could shoot between a 50 and 55, yeah. there's a good chance she could possibly place. I think. Yeah. And that'll be out of 110 girls. Yeah, uh, that's because nice. there's 11 schools, five. Yeah, five. Uh, there's five kids per school. How tall is she? She looks tall. She's just passed up my wife, so she's like five three now. Okay. So. Okay. Hmm. Dude, she's got big hands. Like one day the other day, I was riding in the car when I grabbed her hand, 
dude, her hand is she's her hands like this to mine. <laughs> so I'm like, dude, if you go into your hands, yeah, which is good for her with the sport she's playing. Yeah, blah blah golf. I mean, blah yeah. blah for sure. I mean, if she keeps growing and shot put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, they got that slapping game now, right? Where yeah. You Street beef. Would people. you ever do that? I I I don't. I don't like being smacked. There's just I could never about, do that. There's I something about like this. I'd rather be like punched in the face. Yeah, than smacked across the face. Mm, I, could, I wouldn't yeah, like either. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't love that. I like. I'd love to go that. watch one of those yeah. live. That would be fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, There's nothing better than a good thumb war, though. Honestly, oh, yeah. <laughs> thumb yeah. war. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, when you arm wrestle, do you left and right? Uh, so I normally do right. Mm -hmm. uh, my left's very very weak, but you know my right's a little out of commission right now for the last month. I had a buddy that I went to school with, and after like graduated. Early two thousands, sure. he was doing that man. He but he would go win right hand and left hand competitions, sure. same yeah. thing. And like he was on ESPN before, like when they had the big oh, ones nice. in Vegas or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was uh dude, this guy. I mean, he was joked too, but he was always like he had like the bucket of rice. You do your hand yeah, in and all those yeah. other trainings yeah. and stuff like that. I just I was never good at arm wrestling. Yeah, the the bucket of rice is intense. And then he'd be driving. He'd always have like the yeah. strongest ones. He'd be like when he's driving. I always say I want to get one of those, and I just I forget because they they yeah. actually like to me when I'm driving I'm you know I'm on a constant nerve nerve wreck right. Yeah. I want something to to squeeze. Would you drive a Tesla? Would I drive a yeah. Tesla? Absolutely not. No, no, no. I wouldn't drive a Tesla if it was free. I feel like I I would love that. So like I got an hour commute to work, and it's like I sit in traffic all day. But if I could have that car drive for me. And I could just play on my phone or do Clash work on plans. my laptop. You play Clash yeah, of Clans. I could even start gaming again. <laughs> Dude, all right? this free time. Right. So, like, I, I would love that. I mean, I, I couldn't. I don't, I, you would let a car drive you? Yeah. Dude, yeah, I, I think just, so. I think, I mean, I think so, I think so yeah. That, you're, Why not? You're an absolute psycho. <laughs> God. Are you afraid you're going to get in an accident? A little? I, I mean, aren't the statistics on those? I mean, isn't it way less likely to get in an accident with Tesla in autopilot mode than you driving? Uh, I mean, based I on the numbers I I've seen, no, I'd have to, I'd have to be interested in a Tesla to look those <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we we live in Texas. We yeah. support the oil industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, if I show up to a plant in a Tesla, dude, uh, the refineries well, would not like that. Uh, yeah, well, my vehicles are, are gas hogs, so I'm good, like very, very bad. Good. If I average them all together, it's. Well, I drive a diesel that's that's got thirty seven inch tires, so I got like. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I mean, I have because I haven't paid for gas in like fifteen years. So I was like, people always ask me, "What kind of gas mileage?" I was like, "I don't give a shit. Dude. I don't pay for it." You know, it's like, yeah, it doesn't That's really nice. matter. I only know my gas mileage just because it's a challenge to see how best the best gas mileage I can get. I really don't care what, what are my you gas getting mileage right now? is. Uh, in my work vehicle, I get like twenty one. Wow, That's good. And then I have a um, a large lifted Jeep yeah. that. Um, like 2.1. <laughs> no, I get like, it's 11. I get 17 and 10 in my other vehicle. There you so go. It's not you got fun. a Corvette, right? Yeah. So the, the, the Z06 gets about 10 miles to the gallon. That's probably my fault a little bit. You Hell know, yeah. it's not like I ever drive that. And what no. color did you get? I did burnt orange. So it's burnt orange with black on it. Okay. Did you get a, you got a uh, C8? So I got the last year that they made the C7s. Okay. So I, I got like a those. 2019 C7 Z06. So supercharged. Oh, nice. It's around like, I it has some stuff done, but it's around 700 horsepower, 700 torque. Yeah. And I also it's hard to know what your gas mileage is in those cars because you yeah. put your foot in That's them all exactly. the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got like a new um, Tahoe. So we, you know, for the wife to drive. Yeah. And so that's huge. So it doesn't get great gas mileage. Wait, why don't you get her a Tesla so she didn't have to drive? <sighs> she didn't want a Tesla. I would have. I would have took the Tesla. It's too expensive, though. I feel like. I think you probably don't trust that the Tesla is going to drive her to a place that's safe. <laughs> <laughs> I trust. I would trust the Tesla driving more than I trust her driving. We can edit that out. <laughs> well, actually, we can't edit. We don't even know how to. I'm gonna clip this in, Morgan. <laughs> we don't have an editor. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Yeah. We don't. That's actually not a real person. <laughs> this is live. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh, but no, that's funny. Adam's got a uh, Tesla. Does he? Yeah, his wife, uh, Danielle, does. I did not. Has, has she always had that? No, they just got it about, wait, what? It's been, they got it right before, uh, right, right before the last Right before Indy. we went to Indy. Yeah. Well, they had just ordered it, I think. 
Yeah, they just got it. That the when we went to the uh, the the weekend with the NASCAR race okay. and the so they just got it because we he rented one then. Yes. Mm. Okay, that's what they had bought it. And dude, Adam drives like a freaking maniac. Yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw him pulling out a good ranchers today. He was in that weird looking truck. Is that like a, that's a Jeep truck? Or something? That's what yeah, he's got. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It has like a girl vehicle. big tire. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Yeah, mine's actually. It. If you see yeah. him tomorrow, can you let him know that uh, you talked to Vaughn and he told you about how his his is actually a little bigger than his. Well, I thought for you, you would probably have yours lowered, and his is lifted. I mean, that's an idea. Um, <laughs> you know, I got this thing, and I absolutely hate it. Do you? I yeah. really, it just wasn't a, it was one of those things like, ah, oh, it's real cool, and then now it's like, yeah, it's not cool. It's I've had it for almost two years. It's got 6,000 miles on it. Oh, my gosh. Sell it. Most white Jeeps are drove by high school girls anyway. Yeah. Here we go. Well, you got white? Yeah. Look at his face. You should get those little eyelashes. Oh, oh we're, doing some, we're doing it. I have some. We're doing it. I have some. I think so. I think that would be nice. But yeah, no, I saw him pulling out. And so my Uber driver was actually a Tesla, right? So my Uber driver goes flying out of the parking lot because they are a little quick. Yeah. But I just saw Adam just, dude, he's gone, dude. Just floored it out of there. So. Poor on, thing. On the grind. Yeah. He's always on the grind. Yeah. <laughs> Works too hard, I guess. Yeah. He, yeah. And if he doesn't work too hard, just ask him. He'll tell you he's working too hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. It's funny. So how long are you in town for? So I am in town. So I got to Dallas on Sunday, and then I just got to Houston today. So it's Wednesday, so I will be here until Friday afternoon. Then I head back to Detroit, and then I'm there for a day, and then I'm in Orlando, Florida. So For work? For work. Yeah, another conference. Yeah. How do you find time to uh, cook while you're on yeah, travel? Yeah, so this is, this, is a, this is a rough month for me. So I do a lot of reposts. So I'll grab old content, re-edit it. So I'll either add a voiceover, remove like some of the brands. So if it's like a branded video, let's say it's for a thermometer company, I'll remove all the you know branded thermometers or anything that I specifically call out about the brand in there. And then I'll repurpose the video, post it. But yeah, like I, I don't think I've had a new post go live this month yet actually maybe one but you know like have have you thought about putting somebody to do all that for you yeah so i thought about doing an editor i did try one uh, for a little bit somebody that i met through through good ranchers i think his name was jordan and and he was good the problem is because of work and everything i have going on i don't ever have time to get ahead right so if i could get ahead of the content give it to him and give him time to work on it it would probably be better but what i find is like I have to turn everything around the next day. So it's like I shoot a video till and you're 4 a.m. I you know, put it on my computer. Next day, I'm editing from 9 p.m. until 3 a.m., right? And so it's like I don't have Jesus. any lag time because when you have an editor, inevitably, especially in the beginning, they're not going to get it right. So there's a lot of back and forth and back and forth. And I just couldn't get my videos out in time, you know, with the different yeah. brand deals that I had to use one. And I wasn't like, I wasn't making that much per video. So right. it's like to pay somebody to do it, you know, when you're not making a whole, whole lot of money was, was rough. But now that I'm a little bit bigger, I'm starting to take less brand deals and just raise my price. So yeah. Hopefully soon. We yeah. actually, we actually pay to do every episode here. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. I'm kidding. Pretty much. Um, so the brand deals, how time constraint are you on that? Are they, they, you got strict deadlines where that makes it tougher for you? Yeah, it depends. It depends on the brand, right? So some, you know, some brands will just pay you to use their products in your videos. And those are a little bit more relaxed. But I would say most of them are, you know, they, they say, hey, we want to post three videos this month, every Tuesday. And, you know, and, and basically a lot of them honestly don't even ask for approval. So most of the brands I work with, I put together whatever content I want. I'll tag them in the post. We'll have a specific day. They'll tell me what product to use. I'll use the product. I'll post it. But yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's not it's not very rigid or strict. Now, when you work with a company who's doing a specific campaign, so like I have a video coming up with Sweet Baby Rays. I'm not allowed to talk about what it is yet until it launches. But for that specific one, there is a day and an exact time that I have to post because it has to coordinate with what they're doing on their end for right. marketing and advertising and then, yeah. you know, different stuff like that. So, Have you had, and you don't have to drop any names, have you had a uh, a partner or a brand deal with a brand that just was an impossible to work with yeah yeah i feel like a couple of them that i'm still working with yeah yeah it's what i find what i find tough is 
you know, a lot of, not a lot of brands, but these few select brands, it's like they will push and push and push to get an agreement done with them, right? So I will put in all this effort to come up with, you know, what type of content I'll produce for them. I'll sell myself, you know, we'll, we'll coordinate it all. If I'm doing a different brand deal that's similar, I'll end it with the other company. I'll get everything ready for this specific company. And then it's like, once I'm ready to go, they just keep pulling me along. So it's like, you know, I'm ready to post, I'm ready to do the video, but they're like, oh, like, you know, we'll get the contract over to you to sign. And it's like a week later, two weeks later, three weeks later. And it's like, I've wasted so much time with these specific companies because they can't get me over a contract to sign. And it's like, I'm not going to do the video without signing a contract because I've heard yeah. that doesn't end very well. So I don't want to do that. But yeah, there's a, there's definitely companies out there that, that do that. One thing I'll say for any companies listening is creators talk, right? So like, oh, yeah. I can, I mean, every single creator, you know, that I'm friends with will ask me, hey, have you worked with a specific company? Was your experience like this? And my answer is yes, every time. So it's like, when you're a brand, you don't realize how intertwined the food community is, right? Like I talk to 100 to 200 creators, not daily, but pretty much every week. And we talk about our deals. We talk about what brands we like to work with and what our experience is. So it's like, I think that they, they think that they can treat people a certain way because nobody's going to find out. Right. But they don't realize that word spreads. Right? Yeah. Who's your favorite uh, celebrity chef? Favorite celebrity chef. Honestly, I mean, I know this is a, a lame one to say, but it has to be Gordon Ramsay now. Like, I like his content now. Um, He's done a good job rebranding himself every mm, few years, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I think in the past, I just always used to think he was an asshole. Yeah, but he's actually like a super nice dude, right? Because yeah. like I feel like you you get to see a little bit more about him personally now, with all the different shows and social channels that he's on. I actually at the end of last year did a few interviews to be on Next Level Chef, which is, you know, his new show that he does mm -hmm. on, on Fox. So you know that could be something that uh, you know comes comes about in the next year or two for myself. I'm not sure if they're going to select me or not, but I did a couple rounds of interviews with, with that. So that would be fun. We'll put a petition together. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be sweet. You go out of the country to film that too. Right? Ireland, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I actually know a buddy that was uh, going to do that as well. And then he, uh, I think the last, he, he backed out of it to where he's like, mm. I think he just wasn't, he had a lot of, self-branding that's already been established mm. and there's a lot of stuff written in there yeah that he tried to redline and they weren't you know they just it's just it just didn't work out but that that's the one that i know that it was in ireland because that was a uh for somebody with a family it's a pretty big yeah. pretty big deal you know to to go yeah i mean depending on how far you get in the show you could be down there for a month or two right oh, wow. so it's like that's what they said. It's like a minimum like three weeks, but like more than likely it'd be five, six, seven weeks that you would be down there. But I hear like I've heard. So I talked to multiple creators who are on the show. It's like some of them are getting paid and others got nothing to go down there. Right. But if you have a family, a full time job, like that's a long time away from your family, especially if you're not getting paid. So, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Well, we'll get a petition to get you paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That, would, that, would, we'll that would definitely be part of the negotiation because it's like from a content creator perspective, that's five weeks. You're not. Yeah, making, you're not doing your making content, yeah. right? So that's a that's a lot of money that you'd be missing out on, especially if you have brand deals. You like, you know, hopefully they would understand, but that's something you gotta. Yeah, yeah. It would be, be a lot to weigh out. Fun though. I mean, it, it would be a good time, and I think I think it could help my brand right like especially because i'm already somewhat established so you got a couple hundred thousand followers and then you go on a show you know sometimes that can help the momentum and keep, yeah. keep pushing you especially if you do well or if you just go on there and you're a complete jackass and you can't cook shit that might help as well right like, yeah be the polar opposite yeah of being good is sometimes good for your brand they gotta have those kind of people yeah it's all maybe for could do that it's all for drama yeah maybe i'll go on there i'll be a terrible chef just throw the food at everybody. Yeah. So, okay, so on your videos, one thing that I guess kind of your staple thing is you always put like a retro video game. Yeah. Like, so what What was the point of, I know Magnus got a boner over that. I don't know. <laughs> Which, but, the Pokemon like Gold game? Nye, no, Gold just, Nye, just yeah. like, you know, that's always, you got your own little thing. You have like the Mario sound or you have some kind of sound in there. Porn, by the way, Pornhub got banned in Texas. And so Magnus now watches your video. <laughs> yeah. did, you, did you see? So I tried repeat. this again. So I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. But I did one video. And it went really, really viral. So it was, a, it was a hamburger. So I was assembling the hamburger, but I was like, 
let me put the Pornhub music intro on the beginning of this video. Yeah. So the first seven <laughs> seconds of the sandwich <laughs> assembly is the Pornhub beat, right? And then all of a sudden, I put like a low battery notification that you would get on your iPhone in the middle of the screen. So I was trying something out because I saw some other creator do that outside the food industry. Because what happens is you see the low battery pop up, you think it's on your phone. So you hit close and then all of a sudden it turns the sound on and then you hit it again and then you like the post. Yeah. So it like tricks people into liking the post. And then people also <laughs> get all weirded out. So they go to the comments right away and they're like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So you at got first, me. Yeah. At first the post kind of was slow and people were, you know, talking about the low battery, but then it started to pick up and it started to get a million, two million views. And then everyone's like, dude. I had my sound on, my mom was sitting next to me, and it played that music, I hate you. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's a bigger problem if your mom knows what yeah, that exactly. beat is. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, like, dude, exactly. like, if she knows what that beat is, like, that's a, like, yeah. if you both look at each other and make eye contact yeah. and that goes on, dude, that's like, a she, bigger what problem. What you into, son? Your mom should be reading yeah. erotica, <laughs> not watching Pornhub. Yeah, so that that was that was a that was a funny video. That's pretty genius. Yeah, yeah, and I tried it again with a flaming hot Cheetos burger, and it performed terrible. Dude, so. I love flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah, you should try it on a burger. I mean, Good. I would Good. do that. The whole patty or the whole you can coat bread. it. Yeah, you coat it. You got to do like mayo or mm. cheese or something. So I have taken Cooler Ranch Doritos mm. and like put them in a. Um, a coffee grinder yeah. and just made it, you know, a little fine. Mm. And then I coated it in, I used that for chicken breast. Okay. And yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. It that's was great. Phenomenal. You can do like Ritz crackers, chips. And it, so that's, you know, even so like back to the, the one question. And so like what I try to do with the videos is do like an Easter egg. And so like an Easter egg is a hidden object and something yep. that may not make a ton of sense. Right. But it catches your eye. So I try to do like video games. So I'll do a sandwich assembly and I'll throw the cheese down. I'll throw a video game underneath that and then I'll slide it out and then I'll edit it so it looks like I just melted the cheese into the game, but really I'm obviously pulling the pulling the video game out. So I'll either do like video games or even like go as far as, you know, putting an onion on the table and stomping on the onion and making the onion explode and different stuff like that. So I don't know what started it. I think, you know, I probably saw another creator do something similar with the video game or I just saw it laying around because that's the other thing. I like to just throw random stuff in my video to, yeah. to get people's attention, piss like a, people off. Yeah, because, like a dog taking shit. Exactly. <laughs> Pissing people off is like the recipe for, for going viral, right? And so it's like, yeah. that's the same thing with the, the ranch and blue cheese thing. It's like the negative press actually helps you grow. So like I just start throwing random shit in, in, uh, in the videos. But people love the video games. Yeah, it's a good little touch. What about how do the videos do when you have your, uh, like you have your son in there sometimes, but you yeah. eat, how, do, how do those do when you have, not good. No? Yeah, not not good. And I, I feel like, and this is just a, a guess, like I feel if you make content a certain way and then you do it for a long enough time and you try to go outside of the way that you do the content, it almost they almost penalize you for it. So like an example is some people can be on camera the whole time and have a slow start to their video where they're like, hey, I'm going to take these ingredients and let's make a, a brisket sandwich today. And then they get into the, to, to the recipe. But if I do anything like that, the video just bombs, right? So I have to be showing you the the, the juicy end product part first. Of, yeah, yeah, end product first. This is why it's so amazing. Like hook you, and then jump into it. And I have to keep the pace going. So if I like stop a video and I want to say something on the camera, right? When I look at the analytics of the video, video just tanks at that exact moment. And so I think, it's wild. yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I've put you know, one of the kids in the video, but yeah, I, I think it's because it's a slower video in the beginning because I'll put them on the, on the screen talking or, or something like that. But it's definitely something I want to try again now that I have a bigger following and, and see how it does. But, you know, generally it doesn't do the best for, for views or, you know, likes, but you know, my followers seem to like it. So the comments are always, always great. And then brands love it. So I have a lot of brands reach out, you know, and asking, asking me to make like a video with my kids in it, most yeah. of the time I turn it down because it just doesn't make sense for my page. Um, but like Osmo Salt had me do it a couple times, so yeah, I'll, I'll bring him back in it. I'd do anything for money. Yeah. <laughs> well, besides the tattoo, right? Besides <laughs> yeah. the tattoo, oh, man, you really can't mess with the you can't mess with the temple. Dude, you just can't can't desecrate the temple. Really, I'm just not a tattoo guy. I, I mean, he's a frat guy. I figured he had one on his his, his ankle. I it's, feel like you already shave your legs. It's so. for try. Yeah, dude. Right? Like I feel like you're you're prime for a tattoo, right? Dude, I'm dude. I'm prime I'm prime for love. <laughs> That's all I need in my life. Just love. a little bit of love and a little bit of a little bit of uh, need, 
One of those Thai support. massages? I don't know about that. <laughs> I always want to massage them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can we? Can we? Can we trade? Turn the tables on. <laughs> are, yeah. are you here? Can I walk on your back? Yeah. What are you here? Here for sweetest massage? I don't know. Do you want one? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You pay to give them a massage, dude. Absolutely. That'd be the way to do it. Yeah. It's like yeah. reverse. Yeah. I can see that. You should try that. Yeah. <sighs> I'm probably not. I'm probably not gonna do that. So what? What made you? Uh, like, who were you? Who did you follow to see? Like, oh man, that's a good makes you want to start doing the meat like the, the food creation yeah. there's even somebody that you like you, you watch you're like oh man i could do this yeah so i would say um you know when i first got into it there wasn't anyone particular i just started posting stuff and people started to enjoy it. and i've always liked cooking so i always have made big sandwiches or steaks so i've always been a big meat eater um, but once i started to realize you can make a little bit of money i started to you know see what the good creators you know were doing and you know there's one specific person uh, Jort's Kitchen. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. So we talk all the time. Like when I saw his content. Yeah, I follow, has, I follow yeah, him. Yeah, amazing. Probably like, probably the most underrated creator. And I say underrated and he has like 700,000 followers on Instagram and hundreds of thousands of followers on YouTube and TikTok. But like his level of quality on his videos even blows mine away. And then creativity, right? So he does this full time. So like he'll sketch out on a, on a notepad his videos and, you know, different talking points the where I wing it, right? So like, his, de- or his videos are so creative, but when I first saw his videos, I'm like, that lighting that he has, I have to have that lighting. Like, that is, like, the best quality videos I've seen. So, you know, I reached out to him, and he actually helped me, you know, like, we had the same camera at the time, and he's like, this is what I do with my lights. This is where I put my lights. These are the lights that I have. So I bought all of the same equipment as him. So now, you know, I get people all the time, like, oh, you just want to be like George Kitchen, right? And it's like, hey, yeah, I mean, like, I asked him. He like, makes what good do you stuff, do? yeah. Right, like, yeah. he makes he makes good stuff. And, like, you know, I think that's how it is in the, the creator industry is, like, nobody is inventing anything new. Like, as good as George's content is, like, he got inspiration from somebody else. Right. right? Like, you that's gotta, just Everybody's biting off now. everybody. That's yeah. just how it is. Right? Yeah. And, that, and everybody's got a different palette for mm-hmm. what they want to watch too yeah. somebody might like watch your stuff yeah. they don't like his stuff yeah. it, it's the same yeah. thing and we make you know we make different so like he's he's much more creative so like one thing that i struggle with is i don't have a lot of time for like longer cooks so like briskets and even ribs if you smoke them you know pork and different stuff like that i don't have time to do an 18 hour cook just because the kids and i have a specific window because of my job that i have to film so if i do a brisket it has to be on the weekend and i have to have like my schedule cleared so he does a lot of really creative cooks, you know, because he has that time. He plans it. So he'll do some crazy stuff. You know, I stick more in like the the heavy steak area or big sandwiches or, um, you know, even sometimes I'll, I'll do like pasta recipes where he's much more creative. Pretty much everything he comes up with is a unique dish that nobody's done before okay. versus yeah. I'm making Yours stuff. Yours like big, bold stuff, yeah, which and, and I lo- looks I good on camera. stuff that the family, you know, the family wants to make, like easy pasta meals and, you know, easy wings. So I try to, I'm trying to also incorporate more meal prep stuff. So if you've seen like some of my recent content, you know, I did like a healthy queso mac and cheese in the crock pot. Simple, yeah. makes 20 servings that you can put in the freezer or even like a, uh, a fried rice dish that I made that's healthy. So I'm trying to experiment like, on the meal prep side of things, because I'm a fitness guy, I want to get in, in better shape and different things like that. And, you know, with Good Ranchers, chicken and, and steak prepackaged, it's perfect because you just pull out what you I need to frost yeah. it. Like, it's that's easy. that's the best part. Like, how many times when you go to a grocery store and you buy a waste. that five pounds of ground beef and you only use a pound of it, and then two weeks later you go in your fridge and it's disgusting. Like, yeah. it happens all of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I made some burgers last night for my Good Richard stuff, and it was good stuff. But like, that's delicious. The, that's what I yeah he yeah. ate one. That's what I like yeah. about it because that's what I tell people. Say, hey, even if I wasn't, they weren't our sponsor. From after doing this, yeah. I would stick with this kind of stuff because it makes so much sense for especially yeah. busy families. Because mm-hmm. I would waste so much food. Yeah. I, I've got a lot, you know, a lot of my close friends, I talk about Good Ranch. I mean, obviously they hear it all the yeah. time. You know, they're always like, what's your beef sponsored by Good Ranchers? And like, you know, we get all that stuff all the time. I've had friends that are ordering. I'm like, you know what? Just do it. Do me a solid. You go support me yeah. one time. And then now they're like, all right, it's freaking phenomenal. And it's easy. Like, you know, I don't touch chicken. We've talked about this before. Yeah. I don't touch chicken. Yeah. And I don't have to with Good Ranchers. So. Yeah. I think I think my favorite part of it, so I'm a big sous vide person off camera, right? Yeah. Like it's, it makes for a very boring video if you sous vide anything on camera. Yeah. 
but everything's prepackaged, right? Yeah. So like what I do when I meal prep is I go to the chicken bag, I open it up, I have my sous vide set at 160. I'll just throw all the individual pieces of chicken in the sous vide. It's mm -hmm. already, they're already sealed. They're frozen, but yeah. I'll just throw them all in there and then I'll pull them out. And honestly, the chicken breast, like you come for the steak, but you stay for the chicken breast. Like, especially if you're trying to eat clean, like yep. you don't need any seasoning on the chicken breast. If you sous vide it, it's perfectly tender yeah. and it has a lot of flavor. So like, I'll do a big cook, but in, in the background, I'm just sous videing a ton of chicken. And then it's like, after I cut it up, I put it in my containers for the week and then I go to work. It's so simple when everything's prepackaged yeah. and ready for you in perfect portions. So yeah. Yeah, I do like their chicken. I, really like, I like it. You ain't got to cut anything off mm -hmm. of it. That's have you, well, have you had their shift seafood yet? Yes. Okay. We did. I think I actually still have a little. I think I still have a yeah, maybe like one thing left of seafood. Yeah. So who's your like uh, dream collab to do something with? Like who would you want to oh, really gosh. outside of outside of the podcast? That's what I was. Yeah. Saying. Well, this this was this was absolutely <laughs> my number one thing. So I came to Houston just for this podcast. I figured. Um, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. This is the best podcast that I, I've ever been a part of. <laughs> yeah. Might Thank be the only one. But, yeah, it's not <laughs> only one first, today. First, yeah, I know. I get it. It's, it's the like only... when you have one kid, it's automatically the best. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. So dream collab. So, you know, Jort's kitchen is definitely up there, uh, you know, and, and that's planned. Uh, you know, we have another buddy food with uh, bare hands. He makes great food. He's more of like a, a barbecue guy. So like that's, you know, that's a collab that's going to be in the works. So that will happen. But I would what say. About, what about brands? Oh, brands. Get to um, the person. Yeah, I mean, Good Ranchers, obviously, I'm working with right now. Um, let's see. Any brand that I could be a part of. You know, it's funny because I, I actually just got an agent, and that's his question is, give me a list right. of all the brands that you want to work with. So it's, it's a tough question. I would have to say, you know, I have a lot of, a lot of grills, right? Like, my whole garage is filled, but yeah. I want a green egg. Like... I feel like everybody has those ceramic yep. smokers. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted one. I've always wanted to cook on one. So I think I would like to work with them. Weber was actually really high up on my list, and then they they reached out to me. Uh, Kingsford Charcoal. I like their charcoal, um, and I'm a big, in the summertime at least, I'm a big charcoal griller. Uh, so I would love to do something with them. And then people, I mean, I love... Like Albert can cook is, is a really good creator, and then like the Nick Giovanni's, the Max the Meat guys. Um, but you know which one I like to follow a lot, just because it's cool content yeah. is the cooking with fire guy. Yeah, where he cooks outside over the open fire, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, dude, I love cut, oh, like it's just yeah. ASMR yes. too, man." He's like cutting stuff and like over yeah. like man, that's just a cool. I do like that. You don't see him at all either. It's yeah. just all boom, but it's like real. Yeah, like yours. You got real crisp video. Yeah. You see the stuff getting this cut. Stuff's so good, man. That stuff it just looks awesome, yeah. and he's just cooking out in the freaking wild, man. Yeah, that, that's what I feel like I need to do. So, if you go down by my lake, there is there's a lot of woods down there, and I'm like, I think I need to bring my camera down there in the summertime. Yeah, do some, do something like out there on the roll water, your smoker down there. I you think. can do it by yourself. You're a big guy. Yeah, <laughs> Jeez, you said you had a lot of smokers. Dude, bring one of them. Dude, yeah, but not not the fucking two thousand pound pits and spit smoker. God, dude, have oh man, call that guy that delivered yeah, it. He'll yeah, take yeah, it down. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. So dream collabs. I have it narrowed down to two now. So Ryan can't cook. This guy, he doesn't even post that much. He has like 70 posts, but he has a million followers. His content is like the crispest edited content that I've okay, ever check seen. Check him out. And then uh, Curly. So he's uh, Curly Q, I think is his Instagram name. He's a really good creator as well. Who's that black dude that's yoked? Like the old military <sighs> oh, guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chef. Um, You've seen him? Rush. Yeah, dude, yeah. he's massive. Yeah, so he actually does a lot of videos with with Curly and Albert can cook. Okay, they, I've they, seen his they stuff. Do, they do a ton of collabs. Um, yeah, dude, he, he's huge. He's huge. <laughs> I think he. I don't know if he's part owner or sponsored by. I think it's like Muscle Tech or something like the okay. protein brand. He's like Ronnie but yeah. Coleman, but can cook. Yeah, yeah he's, he's huge. huge, and he's funny on camera. But I, I heard uh, he's just like a super nice guy in person. He like, seems, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's just super, super nice, helpful. He's real brash in his videos. Guy, that's yeah, that's in, his in like his persona. Videos, yeah, he'll throw people out of the yeah. way, punch them <laughs> in the face. Yeah, yeah, he's good. I need to get a clap with him and Vaughn so he can punch Vaughn in the face. Yeah, 
I gotta be we, there. We I actually be don't. There for that. We actually don't need to do that. Yeah, we could. I'm gonna message him. No, but I just don't think we need to. <laughs> we could. <laughs> we could. Yeah, we could. We could. It's it's get a tattoo or get punched in the face. I did. Those, I, are, those I, are the I two. Why don't you ask him the old question that we did early on in the podcast? All right, you're on death row. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Jesus. What do you do? No, oh, never mind. <laughs> What's here? That's neither here nor I feel like there. this is going to be me when I get home after I extended my trip. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, you're on she death wa- row. She was not happy about it today. And you get one. There's this is a two part thing. So you're on death row. You get your one last meal. What is it? Hmm. One last meal. Um. It is going to be a huge bone in. Cowboy ribeye, okay, and then topped with lobster and Bernays sauce, and then a side of garlic mashed potatoes. I think that would be my ideal meal. What's with a drink? A glass of red wine. So mm. red wine and I love red wine. Red meat, cooked medium rare, perfectly at one thirty. I think that would be my last meal. No dessert. I'm not a dessert guy. I just more carbs and more meat. Like Dude, you're about to die. There's not. I, <laughs> yeah, so, so then just bring me out a plate of wings or just bring me out another piece of steak. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got I it. mean, maybe some vanilla ice cream or oh, something. Oh, dude. Yeah, Bluebell like, vanilla ice cream? So actually, I take that back. So I, w- I would could do like a vanilla ice cream with a cappuccino or an espresso. Okay. So I'm Italian. So, you know. I like, like espresso that, martinis. Yeah. Favorite mm. drink. Yeah. yeah. Crush those. So when I first started drinking those, I didn't realize those were coffee beans in there. Just so you know. almost broke my tooth. Oh. <laughs> I get made fun of to this day. Oh I did God. it right at a party, dude. I took a huge <laughs> bite of it. I thought it was a piece of chocolate. If you had, that was before they were popular. So what's the second? Part? The other one is if if you had to eat a meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it mm. had to be the exact. You, you can't say burrito because mm. oh, I'm a chicken. I'm gonna do. It. If you had to eat a meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the rest of your life, mm. what would it be? Man, I thought about these questions all the time. So Pad see you. So it's a Thai dish. So it's <laughs> noodles, uh, either beef or chicken. I. Could take it or leave it. Probably chicken if I'm eating it every single day. Yeah, so it would be some sort of Thai dish with chicken. But if you're looking for a specific dish, it would be pad see you. What was what was a uh, mine was Chipotle. What was rampages? <laughs> that's a, I mean that's actually a great one. Like that would be high up on my list. I, I love Chipotle. Eat that five like five days a week. Dude, we've messed him a few times about doing some kind of collab with him, like because we eat it all the time. Yeah. Like to be a sponsor or have we actually try to have like a uh, we talked to a, like a I talked to like a high up with Chipotle on yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah, about coming on the show, and Chipotle wouldn't let him do it. And we've emailed them. Dude, they <sighs> they like I'm sitting there emailing pretty, them. Pretty wise to do that. Shut and up, they're, they're, <laughs> saying, they're saying that our content does not align with their brand. Is that what they said? <laughs> yeah, but like, but see, but the thing is, is when this happened, we were a family or not family. I mean, we were like, you know, kind of a PG-13 podcast and, you know, they judged us then. <laughs> what are you now, oh, dude? Are dude, you like Z? Free birds yeah. wouldn't even t- yeah, touch us. Yeah, <laughs> Bullritos went out of business because of us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Do you see that? There's a guy on, I think, Instagram who's eating Chipotle every single day Yeah. Yeah. to get, like, the VIP card or get something. I, I don't follow him, but I've, I've seen that content come up a few times. Yeah. They yeah. have a, a the Chipotle black card, I think, or something. I got like enough that. points. I could get one of those tortilla blankets. I might just do Ooh. that. Dude, I'm getting so, like, <laughs> I yeah. eat Chipotle so much, and, I, and I'm... Uh, I don't use the card I, or See, I the do. app. Yeah, I, none a, of that. That's a fail. Well, I do. So I had a dream one. This is a very weird dream. It makes no sense. I may or may not have taken an edible before this dream, but <laughs> I was in a bathtub and I was buried in a burrito bowl from Chipotle. God, hell yeah. And I had to eat my way out of it. And <laughs> dude, I'm like, this is actually like, like dude, this would this, be like the perfect night. That's a, like, that's a, that's a like, sex dream. Give me the house to myself. <laughs> yeah. Bury me in a burrito bowl. I mean, I get the guac, the sour cream. I, I mean, I go full... Full bore. I got double meat. Like, yeah. and then you. The key is, you don't tell them that you want double meat until they already give you the first scoop. Yes. Because so you then, get, yeah. Otherwise, they, they give you half scoops and they fuck around. So it's like the way I order is okay. I'll take a, you know, a burrito bowl and then you know whole wheat tortilla, whatever it may be. And then it's like okay, what kind of rice, sir? I'll take white rice. Gives the big scoop. Oh, also, can I have you know the brown rice? Okay. 
oh, so can I have chicken? Then they'll give me the chicken. Oh, I want to add, you know, another portion of chicken. They hate you. Yeah. So I do it like that and they, they hate it for sure. But it's like, I've seen what you do. If I say I want double meat, yeah. you give me two half scoops. You know what I hate? Yeah. When the person at the end tells on you at the register, he had double meat. I'm like, dude, really? <laughs> I, know, I know, I know. Is this your money, bro? Oh, like, no, dude. Oh. No, yeah. Are yeah. you the fans? <laughs> Dick. Dude, at the, at, dude. In my last job, <laughs> it was 50-50. 50-50. Like they would forget to charge me for double meat. But yeah, there's always that one person. <laughs> Who's heating up your tea, your oh. tea at the beginning of the line? They'll yell He's from like, the back of the kitchen. Oh yeah, dude. the meat. I'm like you motherfucker. <laughs> dude, dude, I have. That turns from twelve dollars to twenty two dollar <laughs> burrito. <laughs> Just got to order. I, and they uh, charge for guac there too, right? Like yeah. Yeah. Kidoba doesn't, but obviously Kidoba sucks. So I don't. Do we have a Kidoba around no. here? I think the last time I eaten one of those was in like Oklahoma or something. Yeah. So let's talk about one other thing we talked about before yeah. recording. So you you. Uh, you asked about In N Out versus Whataburger. Yeah, because so I'm a big In N Out fan. We don't have In N Out in Michigan or really anywhere around us. So when I used to travel, you know, to California for work, I would bring back seven, eight burgers in my luggage, my carry on, and bring them home because we all love In N Out. But now, when I came to Texas this time, everybody's telling me that Whataburger is better than In N Out. I don't I don't know how that's it's possible. Cap. I've never heard it's that. Cap. And so I feel like I need to go there. So, Whataburger is good burger. In and Out is my favorite burger from a fast food place. Yeah, that's what that's what I thought. The so, fries suck though. Yes. So In and Out is, in Trash. my personal yeah. opinion, I think is In and Out's way overrated. I also like Whataburger because it's a Texas staple. Hmm. I'm not going to say it's the best burger by any means. Was it the best fast food burger though? I mean, I, have you had Culver's? I have yeah. actually. Yeah, Culver's is Culver's is decent. I mean, I I don't. I don't really know what my. I'm a big Five Guys fan, though. Yeah. I, I, like yeah. I mean, do we do we count Five Guys as uh, fast food? Yeah. Yeah, I think you can. Then I would go with Five Guys. Five Guys for yeah. sure. But go try your water burger. I do. Is there a special? That, so, like, obviously, when you go to In and Out, I just get, get a bacon double, cheeseburger double. from there. Okay. And that mushroom Swiss. They have a bunch of they have oh a bunch of good burgers. Water. I'm not I'm not discrediting that, but I do. I like the water burger burger is great with that whole thing of onion in there grilled. Yeah. Like, man, that's what a, do you get at In and Out? Uh, double double animal style yes okay with the onion well they ha uh, yeah I i've never had it with the onion i mean i feel like you ever have the onion no it's like let's say if, let's say if you well i've seen it now since they started doing the, the onion whole burger. it's yeah. a whole thing a uh, dude and it's like kind of caramelized a little bit yeah yeah <sighs> so i've seen them because obviously the viral thing on instagram has been uh the i don't know what they call it, the onion burger or whatever from there oh, they, each they don't do the bun but yeah. they just do the onions and then it falls apart every time somebody takes that's too bite. much i wouldn't do that yeah but so you can get the onion like that underneath the patty or underneath the the bun then right yeah okay it's that it's in between good. the two patties where did oh, in and out open up at over here on el dorado oh okay my daughter loves it like, like we're trying to figure something to eat she wants that in and out i think i'm so gonna we, uber there after this to be honest Dude, I'm That's I'm good. starving. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I, I haven't. I actually have not ate one thing yet today. I did not end up eating before I no, before didn't. I came here. Oh, no, shit. so at Good Ranchers, one of the nice things is they have a fridge full of monsters. So I might have had three monsters already Holy today. Shit, and then, dude, uh, dude. they have uh, some beef, hopped up. Yeah, they have some like beef jerky there. So I had like two packages of that, but that's all I had today. Do you ever worry about uh, your heart? <laughs> from all the meat <laughs> no the energy drinks. no the energy drinks <laughs> so yeah i think now that i'm older i'm starting to like i even thought about it when i started doing this food creation because it's like when everyone looks at my videos you can tell like there's not really a lot of healthy eating going on it's just a ton of meat and carbs yeah um, but i was doing you know i kind of just accidentally do the intermittent fasting because i i don't really care about breakfast give me my coffee in the morning don't talk to me i could care less Same. i'll eat at 12 and then i'll eat at six and um, it was like three years since I did blood work, right? So I was like, this is going to be terrible because all I eat is just a ton of meat every single day now on unhealthy sandwiches. And I went in and it was my best blood work I've ever had. So it was like, I was like very shocked about that. But yeah, I think the energy drink thing does, you know, start to stress me out. I don't, I try to do one a day. That's not bad. Five days a week. So I don't like chain drink them or anything like that. But then I also like if I'm going to the gym, and I have a pre-workout yeah. too. And then like I have my morning coffee. So it could be like your morning cup of coffee and then lunchtime it could be 300 milligrams of stimulants. Yeah. And then yeah. 5 p.m. it could be Adderall. A, an energy drink. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, Hey, I might have taken a Adderall hey, recently. Hey, Vi it, I, it, hey I just got on Vyvanse. Woo. I thought you were going to say Viagra. I, we we actually did take, we did take boner pills on the show. Did you? Okay, we we I, have some, I have some in my bag, so if you need an extra one, hell yeah, yeah hell know. yeah, Cialis, I mean, but same thing, right? I, 
I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's hard to yeah. know. <laughs> did, you, did you notice a difference when he took the Viagra? No. no. He was still limp. <laughs> Didn't <laughs> did, didn't help. But that's that's true. So what you brought so like I used so I have ADD, so I I've, I've been prescribed Adderall since I was younger, but it just at, you know, when I first started taking it, it was called Ritalin, right? So it was like that long oh, ago. Oh, you're one of those bad kids. That's like way yeah, back oh, yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah, <laughs> that's way back in the day. So like, yeah. I felt terrible on it. Like it didn't do anything for me. So I tried it again in in like middle school and even high school, and it would make like my heartbeat would be super fast. I would never get hungry and I would feel completely sick. So I was like, okay, I just don't want to take any of this. I'll just try really hard in college and, and whatever it may be, right? So I didn't take any of it. So then recently I tried Adderall, and I didn't have any of the bad side effects. So I think now they have like a slow release one versus one that just yeah. hits you all at once. Yeah. So I took the Adderall, and it was good, but like, you know, I wasn't super hungry on it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it didn't make me feel overly concentrated or anything like that. But then the person I got the Adderall from got their prescription changed to Vyvanse, right? Yeah. Because they're like, we want to give you something a little less intense and try that out. So they gave her that, and then she gave me one of those. Game's changed. Yeah, no. Game is, like, completely changed. I took one of those, and I'm at work. I'm, like, a, a freak yeah. in there. Like, I, I'm, like, doing 17 things at once. I feel so <laughs> motivated. <laughs> Like you, you can't even get me out out of my work. Somebody comes to my office, I don't even notice them. I'm just working away. It was crazy. Hell yeah! How can I help you? Yeah. No. Yeah. So it it has it has definitely changed. Um, I'm taking the lowest dose possible. The problem with Vyvanse, unfortunately, is that there is such a shortage of it mm. that you're you're waiting a while. Mm. So. Oh really? Um, yeah. It's like, like that the, with Adderall too. Like the is. person that, that I got one from, is, you know, she's driving 70, 80 miles to fill her prescription. Yeah. And cool. it's just now, you know, now we're in the days of where um, everybody, everybody wants mm. to control what you put in your body. Yeah. I mean, it's our politicians, it's our pharmaceutical yeah. companies. I mean, they don't want you to feel good. Yeah. They, they want you to be a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's no money in the cure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so like, I'm definitely going to go because obviously I've been prescribed it my whole life. So like now that I know that there's something that works. I'm going to go back to the doctor and, and get a prescription for that. I mean, I think what I was, it was a 50 milligram. So what I, if that's, that's a lot, that's, 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 I think that's like for your a first bit dose, higher. that's yeah, pretty yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it worked. I mean, it worked well, uh, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too well. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not like a crazy high yeah. dose. So they come in 20, 30, 40, 50, yeah. 60. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game changer for me. Where'd you go to college? So I went to Adrian for one year. So I played college baseball out there. Uh, and then I realized I wasn't going to be a professional athlete, you know, and, and it was crazy. Like they had us waking up at 5 a.m. to practice for two hours. And then you have classes all day. And then you had to practice at 5 p.m. So it was two a days Go. every day, even off season. And I'm like, dude, this is like a D2 college. Like I'm not going they're, they're pro. They do too much. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, doing that and then like lifting weight, like lifting weights when you're doing that's impossible, right? Like how can you bench and do anything when you're throwing a baseball a hundred times a day, twice a day yeah. right. and running and that stuff. So then I, I transferred over to U of M, finished my five years there and then kind of just went straight into the workplace. So prior to pharmaceutical stuff, I was doing data analytics, data science. So that's what I've done my whole life's so like web analytics and I was in the mortgage industry with uh rocket mortgage. If you're familiar with them yeah. for, yeah. uh, you know, a good three, four years. And then now in the pharmaceutical industry. So switch. Nice. Yeah. On the sales side of things. Different. Yeah. Look, we're all sales guys. Besides yeah. this guy. Yeah. Oh, he sells his body. Yeah. He On is. back page. Yeah, he is. <laughs> is Backpage still around? I don't know. That's Magnus. <laughs> is Backpage still around? He hangs out in Home Depot bathrooms. Is it not still around, Magnus? Backpage? No. 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 <laughs> is, Cra is, is Craigslist? What do y'all use now? Still How did around? I get dragged into this? What do y'all use now for your. Does, per does Craigslist still have a personal section? Dude. <laughs> no. What? Let's talk about Fortnite or something. Come on. <laughs> He gets all he gets all uh, flustered whenever you try to catch his catch. Hey, so I know you listen to the podcast, so we're gonna do our uh, we're gonna do our segment with you, okay? Because uh, you know, we find folks at Good Ranchers. They're a big part of both finest the, folks. They're both part of our uh, of our outside of our normal work careers. Yeah. We do a lot with them, but uh, we got the segment. What's your beef? Sponsored by Good Ranchers, and so uh, Meatlicious, what's your beef? 
Hmm. Wait, do I got to go first? I feel like you guys should go first for this. No, one. we don't do it anymore. It's just, you don't do it's it just at all. Just a guest. No, we we do one, but we're like we we've been asking the guests when the guests come on, they have they have their beef. Honestly, we run out of them. Yeah. Like, I have to think. Most of mine are airport and travel related. Yeah, that's that's and, my brain it, first went to so, my Southwest flight today, so I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, mm, 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 mm. Do I have any good beef with somebody I'm or something? I'm trying to think what's happened to me lately. I had a beef earlier this week. I can't remember what it was. What's wrong with Southwest Airlines? I saw your post about only flying Delta. Oh, Come all on. All right, we can we can get into that. So you, you, know, know, you don't like Southwest either? No, so I I I you know, no. So I made a commitment to myself, a promise. Okay, when I was younger. Like the Jonas Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Pinky promised to myself that I would only ever fly Delta again after terrible experiences with Spirit. And I've been true to that promise. Like I've never cheated on Delta. And then I end up in Dallas and I'm looking for a way to get to Houston and I realize it's not a two hour drive. It's probably like a four or five hour drive. So yeah. I try to look for flights. I try to look for Delta flights direct to Houston, which there really was none. I don't know if that's normally the case, but there was none. And then I was told that you can do like a private plane. JSX. Yeah, JSX. They yeah. didn't have any at the time, which would have been fun because it's actually not expensive. And then uh, I was told Southwest flies out of uh, the Delta airport or not the Delta airport. You but flew the, out of Love yeah, Field? I flew out. Yeah. Dale, if that's Love Field. Yeah. Okay. Should oh, be. It's L-U-V. It's, oh, yeah. It should it's be not L-U-V. DFW, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I booked the Southwest flight. It was cheap. And then I, I go up to the register, and I go to check my bag. So I printed off. I had one bag that I was checking, but you get two free bags with Southwest. So I print off two tags. So I go up there, and my bag's like 50, 52 pounds, right? And so she's like, well, you can only have 50 pounds. And I'm like, okay, well... I have two tags, right, for free. Like, can I just, you know, can you use some of the weight from the other bag that I don't have and just let me go with 52 and a half pounds? And she's like, no, we absolutely can't do that. I'm like, okay. So I start taking stuff out and like, I get it down, but like, I couldn't get it under that 50 pounds because I didn't have like, I, I didn't have anything else with me to put, yeah. put my stuff in. So, I mean, like she made me take it down all the way to 50.1 pounds. That still was not good enough. It had to be under 50. So I had to get it to 49.9. So it was like a disaster. Everyone's pissed at me in the line. But it's like I'm not going to pay an extra $100 because I'm over yeah. you know, by yeah. two pounds. One, yeah, 0.1 pound. Um, so then there were there was that. And then the fact that, you know, we got delayed and we drove in circles on, on the, the, the flight for a while or on the runway for a while. And then... You know, even the flight's supposed to be like 45 minutes to an hour. Ended up being an hour and 45 minutes because they had to go the wrong, or the long way due to weather. So yeah. you'd rather yeah. them just fly straight yeah, through it? fly straight through it. They were out of drinks. They were out of the snacks. So I didn't know that. Like, I thought, like, Spirit, you didn't get any drinks or snacks, but apparently you do on Southwest. But they were out of all of that. The Wi-Fi was not working on the plane either. So it was like the trifecta. <laughs> the plugs. Ooh. This plane had plugs, like all Delta flights do. I don't know if all Southwest flights do. None of the plugs worked. There was so plugs on a Southwest device. plane? Yeah. Some plugs. of the new ones do. Yeah. yeah. Between your legs. I yeah. guess I never really... They do that. Yeah, they have that. It was a, I mean, it was a big plane. It was a nice plane. It was a big plane, but no TVs. I don't know if that's normal. The, yeah, short, normal. the short one, they, yeah. yeah. Southwest for me, I, I'm, a, I'm a Southwest okay. fanatic. Um, the thing about Southwest is really and truly to get all their benefits, you have to be, you have to have status with them, yeah. you know, cause you're, you're probably what C22 and there Dude, you are. You're that was the, the other, that was my other, yeah. my other complaint. I had no clue what, what to do. So like I was like C40 something. Yeah. Right? So you sat in the middle lot in middle seat. So I get, I get on the plane. There's two people behind me and I'm like, I'm looking at C40. What seat is this? Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. like looking. <laughs> And I'm so confused. Like, no, and then the flight attendant's like, sir, just grab one of these middle seats. <laughs> and I'm like, it, every middle seat that's left, it's a 400-pound person and a 300-pound person, and there's no room in the middle seat. So yeah. I'm just walking by all of these seats, hoping. And, and finally, I actually got to the last seat on the plane, and I actually got an aisle seat somehow. Nice. Right but next yeah, to the I shitter. Didn't, I didn't know. Like, <laughs> you just randomly pick your seats. Yeah, that's it's random. Yeah. yeah. Can you buy a seat, though? No. No. You can and, just you can, earn, you, can earn, you can you can upgrade with to status. be in the first yeah. So like so there's a list a list there's a list preferred there's a list and God. so normally like if I have a Southwest flight I check in and I'm automatically anywhere from a fifteen to a thirty. So you're getting an aisle every time. Every time I'm okay. get, or an exit row which is like 
huge seats and yeah. I'm, so it's all good but if you don't fly southwest at, and have status with it it's kind of a pain in the butt it's really yeah. i mean it's inexpensive um I, there was a, a year i I'm a huge Hilton and South. I'm I'm loyal to Hilton mm. and Southwest, and um, I got invited to go to some uh, Southwest. It's based out of Dallas. Yeah. There was like this conference where you know they put all the elite flyers into this one thing to do a Q and A and all this Jeez. other stuff. And it's like I don't know like what they could do better f- for travel, other than just not let kids on. Hmm. And then that's the only thing. <laughs> This, that was the only feedback I would have I would have given to him. Do you want a little help? How about let's get some plugs on the plane that work? Let's I mean, get some that TVs. would be. Let's I mean, let you pick your own. I mean, seat. that would be great. Long's got a direct line to the to the CEO. <laughs> I, oh, I, how that, much do you fly to be like that elite? Well, a lot. Um, <laughs> I so I did one year. I you know 130 commercial flights. Um, that's a lot. Wow. And yeah, just, that's a ton. And, and and not to brag, but uh, only two of them were delayed. Oof. Yeah. I mean, I probably, my last 40, 50 flights of Delta, no delays, no lost baggage, nothing. I've only flown Delta a few times, but I never had a problem. Delta. Delta's, I mean, and you're also in an area where the, the aircraft or the, the flights you would get are a little different out of there from, you know, the big hubs and things like that. Yeah. Southwest big here. Yeah. <clears throat> Delta's huge in, you know, there Atlanta. Was a, there was that's a year that's that Delta flew. lost my bag almost every time I flew. It was crazy. I mean, oh this was God. like seven, eight years ago. And it was, it had to be seven or eight times that year that they lost my bag. And I mean, it depends where you're going. Like some of them were for fun, which was fine. If you lose my bag and I'm going somewhere for fun and then I get to go spend a good thousand dollars on items, and yeah. they let me spend because I, I had a decent status. So if they lost my stuff, I was going to the store and spending a thousand dollars to replace it. And then I'd get my bag in two days. Right. But yeah. like when you're going to a work event and that stuff is the stuff you need for the event, then it becomes a problem. But since then I, I haven't had any issues with them. Yeah, I've never, I've never had a lost bag. Yeah, thank God. I'm never What's the either. worst flight you've ever been on? Like, uh, sounds like yours is going to be kids related. It's nineteen. <laughs> it, it was. He's like nineteen eighty seven. No, nineteen nineteen May 30th. nineteen ninety eight. <laughs> I was on a at the at the time it was uh, Continental Airlines. Okay. And before it became United, uh, flying into Chicago and. There was like some bad turbulence and you know, you can kind of tell like when a pilot's freaking out, right? Yeah. And the pilot was like, you know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to come into some bad turbulence. But they had all this this wind shear and all this other stuff. Well, pilot comes on and it was back in the day when they had the the phones that you could swipe a credit card and mm. use them on the on the deal. Well, they had actually opened up the flight, those phones so that everybody could call their family. Now, in, in, we're 1999. I'm, I'm 16, 15, yeah. 16 years old. I'm freaking out. Like, oh, what God. is going on? Yeah. There are people puking everywhere. Oh, and you got people calling, I'm, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make <laughs> it. And dude, three minutes later, perfect air. And we're flying. And we land. <laughs> It was, it was, oh, it scared the man. shit out of me. Oh man, that would suck so bad. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that would be, that would be scary. And then on top of that, any flight coming out of Orlando um, Great. is that's awful. Where, that's where I'm going three days. When so. you le- when you get there, you should be okay, but it's leaving for okay. sure. That's the worst. And uh, that's simply because there's all the kids from um, Disney. Disney that shit their pants. Oh, uh, that's probably more of a Southwest <laughs> thing. That's lower class. You don't get that on Delta. You don't really get a lot of kids. Yeah, normally whenever I'm on Southwest, I actually do the flying, so I don't yeah. really smell it that much. <laughs> yeah, what about you? Do you got any bad flights? I really don't. Probably, the, I mean, I never had any bad experiences on any flights. So probably when we flew from L.A. to Hawaii, just because that sucked, just because it's just, yeah. it's just a, boring flight luckily we had like half How capacity it? it's like five and a half hours okay. something like that, which is a long time for you know if i'm not traveling yeah international or something it's just a long flight because we had to fly four and a half hours to lax and then get off there to go to hawaii yeah. which but i never really had any i never had any uh major problems i used to fly a lot with my job before i got oil and gas mm-hmm. but it was always quick flights here yeah from like yeah. charles to houston and or houston to del rio or to harlingen 
or to New Orleans. And those are all mm. easy in and easy out. Yeah. I mean, it's so like my worst. I mean, I've had a couple like rough landings. Like today's was actually really bad because the weather uh, was really windy and the pilots on Southwest don't know how to fly. But <laughs> uh, number one rated airline yeah, for pilots. I, I but don't know if that's not, true. Yeah, I don't that's, know if that's, that's true. So I was on a Delta flight to California and I had a middle seat. Now, like, I won't book a middle seat because of this experience. But when I went to sit down, there was a, a guy who was probably like 400 pounds who had a baby, not on his lap, you know, on his stomach, mm -hmm. right? He had a baby on his stomach. And then the person on my right had a little mini dog inside of like one of those little see-through bags oh, no. on, on her stomach. And they were both huge. I'm telling you, like, I couldn't even sit back. It was a six-hour flight. The flight attendants, like, I, like so they, they gave me like 15. And typically they give you about, at least for Delta, anywhere from like 500 to 1,000 miles if you have any issues. They gave me 15,000 miles, and that was the flight attendant coming to me and apologizing and saying they're going to give me miles. It was a full flight. They couldn't switch me anywhere else. I couldn't even sit back. It was like the worst four-and-a-half, five-hour flight I've ever been oh, on. Oh, man. So one thing Southwest does is if you are That's bullshit. larger, they, have, they make you buy two tickets, mm -hmm. and then you put one little card in the middle seat to say, you know, I'm – Sure. Nobody can sit there. And then they refund you when you leave. Now, I've had a beef before on this podcast. Yeah, that's a, that's a big beef. My <laughs> That's a lot of beef. <laughs> my beef was talking about there is a moment in which you have to know that your comfortability should not inhibit somebody else's. Exactly. And um, I look, there's maybe many reasons why somebody's overweight or, or mm -hmm. whatever. There could be medical reasons. Like I completely understand that. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, yeah. I am not signed up to, to, to be the one that has to put up with it. Right. That's how I felt on that flight. Like I, I'm a very sympathetic person, but like at the end of the day, like when I pay $600 and I can't even sit in my seat because of somebody else. But then I also like the flip side of it is like, the thing that bugs me about that Southwest policy, policy, it's like, who do you think's paying for that refundable seat? It's all of us. Oh, it's everybody are, else. Right. Like, so like my, my beef, and I, and I know I got an argument one time on social media about this is like, if you're, if you're that big, like you should have to buy for like buy a bigger seat, right? Like buy comfort plus or buy, I don't know if Southwest has that. No, they just, no. Buy you just first have to buy two seats and you get a bigger seat or pay for those two seats. Even if you want to give them, 50% off the next seat, whatever. But like to give somebody just a free seat because they're bigger. Like what if you're like, what if you're seven foot tall? You don't get that same luxury. Like you don't just get to pick uh, an aisle row or get a free seat just because you're, you're tall and you're not comfortable. Yeah. yeah that's Southwest, they open the sunroof if you're real tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. D d flights, man. I, d travel is a, uh, I, most of my beefs come out of travel. Yeah. And it's just so petty. It's petty he travel a lot though, so yeah. And then he's he's very easily like Irritated. disrupted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, every yeah. every like he action that I do, full I tilt. Can, everything gets him. Every action that I do in an airport, I I can equate to some sort of money at some point. And it, yeah. it's probably not the best thing I do, but I'm like, okay, this person just cost me four minutes by not taking all their shit out of their pockets before they hit. The, oh, the stuff <laughs> dude if i thought about that every time i got irritated in the airport it would lose my mind yeah there's it's not, so it's much not, stuff it's not healthy no it's, it's really not oh man you gotta take a pill or something before you go to the airport i do i take vivance for the airport or a gummy i don't know <laughs> yeah no, do something then i have a, if i relax. take a gummy then i'll have a, a freaking panic attack yeah, yeah. <laughs> i did that on my last on my last flight and uh i thought i would just pass out no i just sat there wide awake just focused on the tv like <laughs> doing nothing and i'm like this is going to be great because this is a long you know four hour flight nope didn't didn't work for me i did not sleep i just went to london too that was a that was a brutal flight. That Oof. was like seven hours. And it was like one of those things in the morning where I went, got a coffee, got an energy drink on the plane. I'm like, I'm so behind in work right now. So this is going to be seven hours that I can focus on just work. You and didn't then, do it. No, what ended up happening, and this is one of my Delta uh, irritations lately, is I go to board the plane and they announce that the Wi-Fi is down on the plane. TVs don't work and none of the outlets are working. Oh, no. I oh, feel like on a, I feel like that would it be was like it was what a waste of time. It was so frustrating because it's like I just drank this energy drink and like I have a I had a coffee like I'm ready to work and like I can't do anything without the internet Ugh. for my for my job. So 
I like downloaded a couple TV shows really quick on my phone on Amazon, um, but it was it was just a terrible ride. Now the the the, the plus side is. I went to board and it was such an empty flight that I had the whole row of four seats to myself, but I yeah. was never tired. So I never slept. It's a long flight to have nothing. That's that would suck. I don't ever worry about Southwest having to take me to London without that. Well, <laughs> yeah. the planes can't drive that far, right? Like there's no direct. They definitely don't drive that far. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's, there's definitely no direct to London and Southwest. No, no, there's not. There's not. They only fly to nice places. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I agree. London was very different. Really? It was, yeah. It was I've like, never been. So you go to go in the hotel room, and it's like I ordered the regular size room. It's this. Well, first off, they gave away my room because I didn't. So I booked a reservation the day before I came because I was coming at like 4 a.m. So I wanted to come in, and I wanted to just get in my room, and I wanted to go to sleep. So I booked a room, but because I didn't show up that day for the room, they gave away my whole reservation. Yeah, of course. So I get there, and they're like, well, we have no room for you. We gave it away. And I'm like, what do you mean you gave it away? Like I booked it specifically so I could come in at 4 a.m. and sleep. I'm like, well, you have to call and let us know that. And I was like, okay. They're like, well, we can give you a room with two queen or two singles or whatever instead of one queen. And I'm like, that's fine. I don't really care. I'm just here to sleep. But I go to go in the room. It is the it is the smallest hotel room I've ever been in my life. I couldn't even fit my luggage in there. I had to throw my luggage on the spare bed, and I couldn't find the light switch. So I didn't know. In London, they have like a little key card. That you have thing. to put at the front wall. Yeah, but they put it in the bathroom, which is all the way across the room. So it's not even by the door. Yeah. So it was dark when I went in there. My phone batteries were low. So I, I ended up using like the screen on my phone because my phones were too low to turn on the light. And then I went in there and I was searching for it and I couldn't find it. I walked back down the lobby like, oh, sir, it's in the bathroom by the toilet. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That makes no sense. So you go in there, you put your <laughs> card in and then only once your card's in. Can you turn on the lights? Yeah, it's a master. Little That's master. Wow. I, didn't, I didn't know that. It's like all the way across the room too, instead yeah. of by the door. And then it pisses you off even more because right when you go downstairs and get outside of the hotel room, you yeah. got to drive on the left side of the fucking road. Oh yeah, <laughs> hey, dude, I almost got hit like three times. You go to walk across, and if you don't look the right way because yeah. you know, it's opposite, you're toast. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. No, for sure. Then the portion size on the food is... Like, and it's I, expensive. Yeah. so I went to an Italian restaurant and, like, you know, obviously there's conversion, so I didn't think it was that bad on the price until I saw it in, in the U.S. dollars. But um, I ordered ravioli, and it was, like, 65 bucks, and it was, like, eight pieces of ravioli. Like, not ravioli, like uh, tortellini, and it was, like, this big. Wow. And I'm, like great like now i'm walking out of here and i'm going directly to mcdonald's because i need like normal yeah. like portion and the guy's like well you guys have the wrong size portions in the u.s we actually have normal size portions he's he's I'm right like, you're right he's You're probably 100 right, there, right. So. yeah especially in texas i'm sure yeah no for sure yeah, for 65 bucks you'd get a <laughs> Big meal and one to go. Yeah, I'll take yeah, for I'll, free. I'll, we'll take you to Kelly's Country Cooking tomorrow and get you a chicken oh, fried steak. Get you so big of a chicken fried steak you won't oh, know what to Magnus do. Magnus ate so. one of those that time. Oh, it's chicken fried favorite it's like that dishes. big. It's it's bigger than oh, a plate. Like, is it good? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's good. Some mashed potatoes. Magnus, how far is that from here? Oh, uh, across the street. Five minutes. <laughs> they have breakfast. Yeah, breakfast absolutely. all day. That might be where I go to breakfast. They got they got biscuits that are this big. London size portion. Yeah, you ain't leaving. It's the size of London. And you don't get free refills in uh, London. Oh, really? Or I, didn't, ice. I didn't notice that. Oh, I guess it's, I guess it's true because I just couldn't even get regular water there. It always had to be bottled water, and I paid for that. I didn't really ever have pop there, so pop. Yeah, soda, soda pop. Is that a pop? It's called Coke. Coke. Is it? So I used to call. Sprite, I, I used to call Coke? it Coke, and then it, and then I was like, no, it's called Coke. And then everybody's like, well, what do you, what do you call Sprite? Coke. Well, it, it didn't really make sense, so now I call it soda. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't really make sense. So, like, when you go to a restaurant, what if you want Sprite? What are you asking for? I don't ever drink Sprite. So I just, root beer. I order root beer. Okay. So you don't call everything Coke. Yeah, no, we don't. I, I, yeah. I'll, it's more like, hey, do you want a Coke? And yeah. Like, yeah. What kind well, of Coke kind would of you yeah. like? <laughs> hey. Cherry. Check <laughs> Cherry Coke. <laughs> and Dr Pepper. Oh, okay. Coke Zero. Gosh. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so, what's next for Meatlicious, man? What's on the horizon? Yeah. So. um I think a seasoning line is probably the next thing that you'll see from me. And then, you know, pushing harder on other platforms. So I feel like, you know, Instagram's grown for me. Uh, mm -hmm. It's doing, doing really well. Uh, I'm enjoying it. But YouTube is one of the platforms that I really want to, to grow on. I've been stuck at, you know, 2,000 subs for, gosh, a year now. And then over the last month, kind of blowing up for me so i'm at like 16 17 000, you know subs oh, wow. on youtube Damn. so youtube you get monetization right and so mm -hmm. 
you'll get paid to post based on the views. No other platform is really doing that well. I mean, TikTok's trying to do it. Uh, Instagram looks like they're going to try to bring it back a little bit. But YouTube's one of those platforms where I really want to grow because once I transition full time, the plan is to do long form content as well. So if I can build up a good base of followers with all of my shorts, so just repurposing my content, when I go to launch long form content, I'll already have a good base. You have a base, yeah. 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 So, so is that your plan to go uh, to dive head into this? Yeah, I mean, I think like a couple of years, you know, down the road, because I think like I have a lot of things branding wise that I want to build out that cost a lot of money, right? Like I want to build a good website, you know, for my recipes, you know, a merch line, a seasoning line. I also want to either upgrade like my kitchen or my workspace, uh, you know, definitely get another camera. So I have two cameras for angles. So there's a lot of things I want to do that are really expensive in, you know, the next year or two. So the dual income is very nice. So I think, yeah, probably like a year or two more of work. And then, you know, if I continue to grow and things go well, I would love to down the road do this full time. That's would, the goal. Yeah. yeah. That's no, the, I, that's that the be, goal. I would love to podcast full time, but you know, yeah, the reality be, of it is, is that would be awesome. I'd also like to play in the NBA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. That's the same dream for. Us. I mean, we got, we got, we got one dude over here who can go join the Texans. Let's right go, now bro, start, man. Tight in. Mm-hmm. That cat, Everybody's gonna remember that, that one kid, dude. But that was such a great catch, <laughs> dude, dude, and it know. was a, it was a walk off, dude. <laughs> to be there for that moment, yeah. Fun to even watch. He was over eating chicken no, fingers. No, I actually watched the. I I watched it. I watched. I got I watched that like eight times. I was <laughs> I was impressed. I'm like, damn, dude, this guy's fucking an athlete. I didn't. Even, I never even played. Right. Football. I mean, I played football with friends. I never played. I was little guy in, in high school, so I never. Yeah. I never played. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but no, I was. I was actually right there when you caught it. That was awesome. But, uh, I was like. I was like. And I remember telling my son right after he caught yeah. it. I looked over at him and I go, he's going to be talking about this for the next five years. He still talks about catching Alex Bregman's home run ball. Oh, that's a great dude, that too. Is, dude, I honestly feel like you need a tattoo of that catch. like Of yourself yeah, it's like, it's almost like it. It's almost like the Heisman, but it's almost like your version of the Heisman. I'm doing it. I think that would be a great tattoo. A tattoo of yourself? Instead of yes. A, instead of a, oh, my God. What am I doing? No, <laughs> instead of a football, you're catching a good rancher's ribeye. Okay. I'm Boom. I, look, Sold. I think that's a great idea. I, dude, I don't care. Dude, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah. I will go and watch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not scared, dude. So, hey, so how can everybody find you? So, it's Meatlicious on Instagram. Yeah. So, Meatlicious on Instagram. How's your TikTok doing? TikTok's uh, almost at 50,000. That was another one that I was just stalled on, but that's picking up. I'd say over the last month or so, I put on a good like 30,000 followers there. So I think all the other platforms are starting to to pick up. So similar name, so it's Meatlicious, but on TikTok and YouTube, I have an underscore at the end. But if you just start searching meat... It'll start pulling up, yeah. It will It will start it will start pulling up. So yeah, you can find me there. Uh, you know, I'm on Facebook. I'm about to relaunch my Facebook. Facebook's so weird. I don't know if you guys are on Facebook, but mm-hmm. like... I converted my personal profile to a professional page and it's like, you don't get the same benefits as you would if you did like a, just a solo started. Page. Yeah. I know. Like I have, a, like I have a solo a, like fan page. Yeah. So I have like my uncle Dale page. Yeah. That's, that's verified. Yeah. And then I have my personal Dale Mills one, like for my personal stuff, you yeah. know? So, and then I have one for each podcast. So, but yeah, it is YouTube's, Pain in the ass. I don't look at any of them. YouTube stuff. Are you guys monetized on YouTube? Because long form, I know, like it's so short form. They make it so hard to get monetized. Yeah. Long form, the watch hours are not the hardest to get. We are monetized yeah. on YouTube. That's but awesome. I don't think we even have any accounts linked up to it. Yeah, we do. But no, we don't have anything. Uh, so my uncle Dale page is monetized. Now our two podcast ones. So you have an uncle Dale YouTube page. No, 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 no. My Uncle Dale, like, Facebook page, I'm saying. I'm oh, okay, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, on YouTube, yes. We, uh, it's monetized. We still, uh, we still never set up our, it's, I mean, we got I'm sure they owe us, I'm sure they owe us money, but we just yeah. haven't linked it. Yeah. yeah, you gotta, like, enter your social Because we put every, in. we put everything on there from, you know, like, so he yeah. puts the, the full long form, and then we post them on Facebook, and yeah, so for all the, the reels long, and stuff. For the long form on YouTube, it's like a certain amount of watch hours and then followers, right? So I think you'll probably you probably have both those. We're, we're we are on YouTube. We are monetizing. Yeah. There. I know that for a fact because we had to have you had to have like it was four thousand hours yeah. and over a thousand. Like so, we got like almost two thousand yeah. followers 
and we, then we have we had we hit the the minutes thing pretty quick. I think we just had last month was sixteen thousand hours or something like that yeah. that was listened to. That's good. But, like for short form though on YouTube, what they make you do is it's I think it's similar like five five hundred or a thousand followers, whatever it is. So that's like the easy part. But they have uh, in ninety days you have to get for the first part of monetization you have to get uh, three million views, and so. The first part of monetization and everyone thinks so like I've talked to brands, um, even the knife company that I work with, you know, they were they thought they were about to get monetized just like I thought I was about to. But the first part of monetization, when you get the three million views, unlocks the ability for you to have badges and like premium members who can pay to support you and yeah, get a badge. Give you coins or whatever those. The real mean. monetization that I wanted is based off the views and like the the, the watch hours of so people watching it, viewing it, rewatching it. And then you get you can get paid you know, $800 a month, whatever it may be. So that's the monetization I want, but they force you to have 10 million views in, you know, 90 days. And there's it's some, like, that's hard for YouTube shorts when you don't have some, a huge following. There's some crazy, yeah. yeah, the numbers that they, they want you to yeah. have. I've seen on some of the, the, like the next levels. I'm like, holy crap. I was like, and like our TikTok and our reels, they do well, but you know, we'll have some that blow up. Yeah. Hell, our biggest one still to date was the one we had. We had Steven on from Good Ranchers oh, doing the bro nice, day thing. Nice. It had like yeah, seven hundred thousand views on TikTok. That's like that one, amazing. That yeah. one grew us like that was like doubled our account in a week. Yeah, that yeah. one video because it just it, dude. I don't know Tick, what it was. So TikTok they allow so like it's weird because like TikTok if you have a viral video you get a ton of followers from it. So yep. like I had a buddy make similar content that I do. He had two videos go mega viral on TikTok, 30, 40, 50 million views. He went from 10,000 followers to 400,000 followers in like yeah. days, right? And then now he's been at like the 390,000 follower mark for a year now yeah. because like he's had just normal videos since then. But like if you have those same type of viral videos, so like I have like, you know, like if you have like a 10 million view video on Instagram, that might only get you 3,000 followers. But if you have that 10 million view video on TikTok, you get 20, 30, 50, 60,000 followers. We got a ton it. off of that one because like it was just like it kept growing, growing, and growing. Like, holy crap. Like, it was. I mean, I've set up a bunch of uh, TikTok accounts and I like all of our stuff. So, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> no, that's but the like I said, man, I mean, for us, the, the biggest thing we've done for this podcast, like, this would be episode 91. Yeah. So, we've been on 91 straight weeks. Yeah. Uh, you know, early we looked at analytics, but we we like okay, we're just really looking at like being consistent, mm-hmm. keep doing it, what we're doing, yeah. trying to just make better. Magnus makes the good reels that people yeah. people like those. People, I've had people reach out to us like, hey man, I want to get on that show? Do I like the reels y'all make? I like the stuff. Yeah. Or we've had other people that we've done podcasts with that reached out to want him to make a reel for him or stuff like yeah. that. So that's what's cool about it yeah. but you know it's just one of those things man we just got to have something that takes off or yeah but we're having fun doing be, it so yeah you gotta i mean just you know, consistency you is the biggest consistent, key right like it could be it could be 10 years but you know in the end once you get there it'll be worth it because it's like you know this is obviously what you guys enjoy and are passionate about same for me with cooking and yeah and the videos like that's what that's what i'm passionate about right so even if it takes two years five years ten years to go full time once you get there, it'll be worth it. But, you know, as long as you're putting in the effort, staying consistent. And I think, like, you know, just not being complacent. That's the biggest thing. Like, especially in my world, you have to be looking ahead, right? Because if you're just doing what everyone else is doing and you're never growing, that's how you get left behind. There's so many creators who I watched when I first started. And, and their, content, them. their content, like, I looked up to them. They were using an iPhone. But, like, their content has not even got a, 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 a centimeter better in two yeah. in like the year and a half i've been doing content and it's like they've almost got lost in the shuffle they were doing instagram full time they were doing facebook full time they're making a ton of money but then they never improved and now they're they're gone right and it's like my videos from when i started to where i am now it's like it's it's night and day so i think like always finding ways to innovate improve and and different stuff like that's huge in this space yeah yeah you gotta you gotta make stuff that's appealing to, for people yeah. to see uh, like I said, I think even with the reels that Magnus makes, putting in those extra little yeah. clips of stuff in that are silly, yeah. like that's just good things. And then, you know, we just try to, that's the tough part. Listen to the podcast and like, we're like, okay, what's going to be a reel from this that's funny, that's, that's yeah, catching? It's like, you know, an hour and a half of content. It's, you want to find 
one piece. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, awesome, there's some we'll find a couple from some. We it's harder to find, and it's just it's like okay, like we were talking about the other day in the text, like we want to start a new segment that's something like it's pretty funny. Yeah, every week to where it can oh, be yeah. something that we can just kind of start, and if we get yeah. some new sponsors in. Yeah, we can have that. They sponsor that that yeah. segment or whatever. I so. think, you know what I think we need to do is we need to do like we we should have done the the taste test with the shrimp cocktail sauce because they sell it at the grocery store. Should have set up a table right here on the camera yeah. and all went to town. Dude, <laughs> I mean go, that was intense. Let's let's go to Indy and just yeah. do it again. Yeah, yeah dude, we'll you got. It. We'll do it again. We'll take a Delta flight. I'm scared. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I plan on being back in Indy. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, good ranchers. If you're hearing this, yeah, I, I plan on being back. I need our invite in Indy. Good so, ranchers, I know. <laughs> um, you know, please send me an invite. I'll make you guys a couple extra videos. There you go. <laughs> uh, Can I just yeah. say that the creamy steak? Pasta. pasta. I've been watching that on repeat. Oh, I just can't like, get enough. How good's that? A crust, right? Oh my god. It's good. Yeah. That it's good pepper. Crust. Oh yeah. my god. I'm just. Mm. He, I'm he's about hungry. I, I still have not. Dude, I'm starving. Today, so. All right. Well, let's wrap this up. He's about to blast out. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. man. Hey, we appreciate you, dude. Yeah, for uh, sure, man. This has been fun. Where are you staying at? You staying right yeah, here close? So I'm staying. Um, it's a it's a Marriott Spring Hill or something mm-hmm. like that. So it's it's right by the Good Ranchers office. It's actually, only like five minutes from here, so it's yeah. super close. So, well, good man. Well, yeah. We appreciate you coming in town. Absolutely, and, uh, dude. I've been. This I've been, been We've been talking about this for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you got your shirt now, so you're official. I got my shirt. Yeah, yeah. I, I may not feel over your biceps, but yeah, you can cut the sleeves <laughs> off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking I need a double XL, maybe. Mm. Okay. Yeah. No, I actually need just a large. I'm not that big. I know. Well, I was at a largest. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. Remember, those were free. It'll fit your body. Yeah, no, but. Free. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been looking forward to to this podcast. It's actually the first podcast I've ever been on, but you know I, I definitely enjoy the fact that you just come on, talk about life, and yeah. say whatever is on your mind. Like, just, this is something I could do we every don't, day. We don't script really anything, dude. It. We just go. That's why I was like, okay, so like, are they going to tell me what we're going to talk about? Like, when are we going to talk about? This? Don't we just sit down, have no clue what we're yeah. about to fucking talk about, <laughs> yeah. and just kind of go in and like it just it works. Yeah, like, we just yeah. broke down, dude. Yeah. There's so really there's, no need to plan. No, no, not when you got enough enough shit to talk about yeah for sure yeah absolutely well, next time next time though next time i come in here let's do a let's, little cooking let's no so we, we we got to next time we need to plan this out i know this yeah, is kind of a short on the, the, last on the whim thing uh but yeah we need to definitely do that because i know magnus was excited he thought you were going to cook for us yeah i, like, I think it, i think it'd be fun we can Try some weird ass shit on camera. See, that's that's how you go viral. And we'll cook. Yeah, and we'll and we'll <laughs> yeah. 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 even Von will cook. Dude, I mean, that that should go viral. Yeah, you know right? what? I if, <laughs> right, like he wears what? just an apron. Yeah. Nothing else. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna white, his little white saggy what? butt. I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna cook for y'all. Like oh, some goulash. Gosh, it's Dude, funny. I cook. I promise. I, All right. Yeah. Well, it is April. Thank you for coming in, Meatlicious. Yeah, yeah Meatlicious, we appreciate it. You're a wonderful it. man. Thank you. Uh, thank you for thank having you me. Thank you to our both our mutual sponsor, Good Ranchers, for the connection. Absolutely. And, and just uh, remember, no matter what, use our code D&D Pod. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But if you, if you want the extra discount, use Meatlicious. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, my God. You get free bacon with You can that stack discount, them. Just put ours in first. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can <laughs> double stack them. Use our code. You get two boxes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We're That's out. Great. See you. All right. Good ranches meet, bring them good eats. We stay swangin', no words, never bland. Podcast kings on the mic, yeah, we grand. From the heart and the soul, our stories unfold. Raw and real, yeah, our tales is gold. Cause we tipping off four bowls, wrapped in four bowls. Podcast too ill, make this take off his clothes. Good ranches meet, always bring in the feast. Uncle Dale Bond, Magnus be on the beat. Cause we tipping off four bowls, wrapped in four bowls. Podcast too ill, Magnus take off his clothes. Good ranches beat, always bring keep the feast.